All right, well, let's go ahead and get started in, in the second session of phase one. <laughs> uh, listen, I want to thank you guys. A uh, couple quick things. I've got, uh, I got updated copies of the work that we did last time uh, on March 25th, and I wanted to make sure you guys had a copy of it. We will be starting right around, I think, uh, I think Northwoods Park Middle or somewhere around that area is where we left off. I'll, I'll get to it in just a second. But I did want to mention also the other thing is, uh, you know, we, we, are, we are filming this one or taping this one. And what we're doing with the tape is if you go to our website now, go into operations and facilities, you can actually see the capital outlay process meetings. Okay, so we can uh, bring this up. Well, well, I can't right now because I've got to log into YouTube. But, but uh, we can actually bring this right. At, you can actually see the meetings as they go along and stuff as well. So that's one of the nice things about this. It makes sure that everybody, the community and everybody else can see the process we go through. So, and I appreciate you guys going through this as well. This, this session right here, I'm thinking it's going to be about another two hours. I think it'll go pretty quick. We're starting to get into a routine now. We were starting to knock them out pretty quick. We may slow down when we get to Richlands High School and White Oak High School, but, uh, <laughs> but we'll, see, we'll see how we go. <laughs> so, anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so when we start looking at this, I, I believe the last place where we stopped was North, Northwoods Elementary School. And I think also with the handouts, I gave you a, a list of how we're doing our priorities again by category and then timely this needed. One being mandated by law, two, safety and security of students and staff, three, preservation and protection of property, and four, instructional needs. And then if it's an A, after that, that would mean that's that we would like to get it done this year. B would be within the next two to three years. C would be within the next five years. So let's. So the first one is Northwoods Elementary School fencing around campus. Okay, and student runners have the capability of leaving campus, crossing the streets, and wandering into the woods even with, with supervision. Okay, I, I noticed we didn't put a, a price on that yet. Is that something that we were looking at doing in Dusty? Is that something we're looking at doing in uh, through the all sites, or is that something we'd be? That was something that I, I wanted to talk to Dusty Rhodes about as far as security goes and see how what we're allowed to do and where we could place the fencing at. Okay. Because it, we don't know. We can't get really put a price on until we know where we're going to be able to put the fencing. Okay. We still have to be concerned with uh, security and also the students getting out of the building, if possible. How are we going to how are we going to put gates and stuff up? And how are they going to be controlled? So that's something that can we put that off to another session while we have some discussion? Okay, we'll do that. So that's that's a TBD right now. Okay, we also have security lights. Lights needed between media center and multi-purpose building. The lights make it unsafe for evening events. And I just put that on it. It's just a work order. It's just a work order? Okay. We paint parking lot lines. So striping the parking lot lines. Again, that's a work order. Okay. Awning for car car rider pickup. If I remember, protect students from weather elements during rainy and summer months. And would we have that listed for the other schools that ask for awnings for the for the car pickups? Is that two uh, B was built for? Is it two B or two A or I can't remember. Let's see. Two B. Okay. Now let me ask you this then. In this situation, I mean, is this is this request here? Is there a, is there a need that takes precedent over the other um, awning requests for the other schools? 
Is there something that's, I, I don't want to, I guess what I'm saying is I want to make sure that we don't put something, I mean, we're just yeah. going ahead and just giving a, a, a generic number just because all the others got it. If there's something that sticks out that requires some additional work, we need to know about that as well. If I remember there is correctly, there is a covered breezeway that comes out to where the car riders are picked up, mm -hmm. but then there's not anything in the, you know, Beyond yeah. that, it just yeah, it just comes to an end at the end of the sidewalk. So I don't know that it's anything that makes it any different than any other. Okay. All right. So that's two B. Replace control valves. Install thermostat control valves. We had that in the capital improvement plan, but that was long term. Yeah. Um, that's just a it's a, a comfort issue. It's just a, a, a valve you put on the radiators to kind of control the temperature. Um, okay. System there is really old. Do we have a hard time keeping climate in, in those rooms? I don't right hear now? that many complaints. So they either they uh, uh, just deal with it, or, or that's one of the things that was recognized to, to try to better uh, control the temperature <coughs> in each space. Okay. Just, so now, as, as far as categories, it's not mandated by law. It's not safety and security. Preservation of property or instructional? It's one of those things you want to do to try to just to make the classroom more comfortable. That's, okay. It works as it is. It's just one of those things you would like to do. But I'd, I'd say more for instruction because the comfort of the kids. And it's the energy management thing also. Okay. If you're not overcooling, if you're not overheating, they're not having to use their wind air conditioners to cool the space back down. Something we need to something we need this year? I mean coming here? I would so say four B or four. Underground fuel tank removal. Again, that's one of the things that we try to to put in funding for at least one fuel tank. Mm -hmm. And we have um a lot of older fuel tanks around the school system that we need to, to remove or close. And so we're just, that one right now is not an immediate issue. It's just if we could do one a year, and that's one of them that's on the list. Okay. So whether we can select that one, or we could select, get money like all site funding for moving a fuel tank, that would be kind of nice. Then we could remove the one that, that seems to be the worst one, worst offender. Okay, so 3B. Now the schools, okay, Northwoods Park Middle School. The place carpet in the media center. It was identified in the capital improvement plan for year four, but uh, when it, that media center um, carpet is is in bad shape. What's that? I said, we've been chasing after this one with the storm and all. So, let's say 3A? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Replace carpet in the chorus room. I can't remember what it looked like in the chorus room. Same thing? Same thing, yeah. Okay. Okay, we got replace windows and replace window AC units. Okay, we've got eight broken AC window units. We, we, they've been ordered. So that's just a work order to get them in? We, we recognize the problem. They've been ordered since before the hurricane. We're still waiting to get them. Okay, so it's in process. Okay, they asked for three additional cafeteria tables. That right there, I think one of the things we can look at is um, other funding. We'll we'll see what we can do with uh, with in the in the school nutrition funds as well. Okay, so I will put that as other fund funding source. Okay, we got uh, the nineteenth most urgent roofing project over the administration administrative building at uh, Northwest Park Middle School. <coughs> 
think we were listing those as three C's. So three C or three B or I think it was three B in the nineteens, but you mean like uh, what was one through ten? We were on A. Yeah, one through twelve okay, was well, A. So that would be a B. Three B. Okay, three B for um, the front classroom building. Three C for the canopy. Uh, we're going to try to do that canopy. We're working on that. We're working think, on that right now? I think we're going to be able to take care of that uh, while we're doing the hurricane repair work. Okay, so that's in that's process. Cost. Okay. Another underground fuel tank? 3B? Yes, is it in a good, I mean, fair shape? One of the things we want to make sure of, too, is if we do have an underground fuel tank that's in bad shape, or we start to notice that it's starting to have more water in it than than expected, we need to go ahead and address it right away so we can get, make sure there's no haz hazardous impact, I mean environmental impact by having that fuel tank in there. And we'd recognize that we're probably going to only try to do one this year, except we just wanted to put it in the budget so that even if it is um, uh, we put off to another year, it would still remain in, in the process and it would be recognized that this is an issue that's uh, to be addressed. And it's one of those things, just like the asbestos abatement that we, we look at and stuff, while there's no there's no issue or safety concern right now, on an annual basis we try to knock out at least a, 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 one more project on that so we can get it all out over a period of time. Same thing with the underwater, under, underground storage tanks. Okay, we got um, HVAC equipment, Northwoods Park Middle, we placed one of two units for the cafeteria. That was identified as was coming less here. Important than that. Three A. Yes, sir. Both of those next requests, the one for the cafeteria and the one for the gym. Okay. We do air conditioning units. Replace twenty-five year units. Twenty-five year units. It was in the capital improvement plan for year three. Is this the same one that was up there earlier? Is this a duplicate? I don't know. I would I would just cancel that out and say it's a duplicate. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and knock that one out then. And we're going to try to reutilize some of the equipment from Richlands, the old Richlands Elementary School too. We're okay. already inventory and those Daniels already got somebody working on that. All right. Then we got uh, replace main electrical switch gear. That's one of them just like Jasper High School. It's working now. It's just, it's a, an old fuse bus system, so it could. So we had with 3B at the time. Yes, sir. It's in it's in the capital improvement plan for year three as well. So. Okay, Parkwood Elementary. Uh, resurface the sidewalks. Sidewalks are uneven in many places, causing students to trip. Mm -hmm. Put a walk order in. Okay. So we do have multiple areas that are. Metal overhangs covering the sidewalks. You want to get them replaced? Our paint program. Yeah. Well, the overhangs that front one we need to get replaced by the office mm. door. <sighs> Most of the time, when that work is done, it's done when the buildings are re-roofed, mm -hmm. and um, those roofs are, are hanging on. Um, How bad is it? They're in bad shape. So the water in front of the office is in real bad shape. Uh, the part of the issue there is everything runs on top of it. Okay, as far so as power and internet. So let's say that's that's three A approximate cost to, to replace that. We may have to get a structural engineer. Okay. All right, I'm gonna. Calls. I'm gonna put thirty-seven thousand for right now. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And if the changes, I'll put. Okay. 
Classroom Building C, 15th most urgent roof. That'd be a, a B. Breezeway, 16th most urgent roof would be a, a B. And that's, now, if I'm saying this too quickly, I'm, I mean, we need to stop and talk about these things. Let me know. The next one's a duplicate. Next one is a duplicate, so I'm just taking that out. Okay, replace HVAC equipment. You had, you had two of them in there. You had one of them was in uh, year, year one, capital improvement plan one was in year two. Yes, sir. But it sounds like they're both needed this year. Well, if, if we could look at trying to do uh, systematically, we'll start working on the first one this year. <clears throat> okay. And then just follow the capital improvement plan, year yes, one. Sir. Would be A, the year two would be a 3B. All right. Queens Creek Elementary, need re windows need replaced in 100 hall, library room in 725, in room 725. Is that because they're glazed right now or, or fogged it's up? It's that one hallway where it's all glass on both sides and stuff and all. It gets entrance. hot. Yeah. They want to, it heats up. With the sun, but they also look at it for security reasons. They're saying, you know, anybody's in the hallway that comes up, they can see everything. Because that's coming from the multi purpose room and the um, car so room. Yeah, that's really the same request we got from Carolina Forest. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is this the same one as Carolina Forest? You said? Yeah, they had 10 windows along the hallway, 600 hallway. Whereas this one's replacing, but it's the, it sounds like it's the same area. Yeah, what, what did we, how did we have that classified? 5C. 5C. Okay, um, office, uh, new furniture in the library area and in the principal's office. Furniture's probably been there since the school was built, which was back in, what, 94, 96, somewhere around there? What's that? 98. So it's been there for 20 years. Is it A, B, or C? What's, what's the furniture looking? What's the furniture look like right now? Does anybody really know? <clears throat> all right. Well, I'm gonna. All right, we need to take a look at it then. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put a three question mark. Okay. And we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. I'm going to make sure I like that. All right, security cameras. Do you do an updated security cameras? Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I'd give it a two-way. They have the original 16 still in place. We haven't added anything. Okay. So... Um, I would say we could probably do. I put ten there. What's it? What's um some of the other schools the same size like Hunters Creek L and? Uh, they're probably yeah around. They've all got the sixteen, that original sixteen I believe. Okay, and Southwest yeah. Elementary and Carolina Forest same thing. Um, Southwest Elementary's got five more. Carolina Forest has got five more. So even five, I think, would do them some justice. Okay. Um, we have a lot of interior coverage, not a lot of exterior. Okay. Okay, gravel road, need the emergency vehicles to get around the campus. The road gets washed out. This happens routinely. It just would we gravel it again.
Is that a work order or is that a capital project? If they're concerned about the um, emergency vehicles getting around mm -hmm. the building at, because of the other construction work and the baseball field and stuff at the back, you know, the practice field, it's going to need some uh, civil work uh, and some drainage put in. It's, it's more than just uh, okay. a little bit of rock. That's gotcha. why the price is so high on that. If it's a safety issue, we're going to need to do a little bit more. Yeah, we, had, yeah. I mean, we had a similar request of Hunters Creek Elementary, and we ended up putting that one back as, as maintenance with gravel. I don't know the difference. What I think the condition of the Creek is the, on the very far way end. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's going back and trying to fix where Awasa has been cut back through to their back. At Queens Creek, there is no road that goes around the back of the school. So there's no road at all? No, sir, because there's ball fields and playgrounds that's taken up all that. And so you only got the area between the ball fields and the playground and the back of the school. Which is it's not really a, a road no. all the way around the, mm -hmm. the facility. No. It stops Fire there by the trailers in okay. the pre-K. And then on the other side, the road goes back to the... Um, Swansboro High School softball field. Okay. Warren Page. Page, uh, what we're doing right now is we're going through the list of, list of them, and you saw you saw how we're doing the priorities. Got it. Okay. So chime in anytime you, you have some. Okay. I mean, I, we need your input. Okay. So. Okay, Queens Creek Elementary paint. And uh, it says the 100 hall, 300 hall, and classrooms. Need painting. I didn't see a price in there. I know it was on the capital improvement plan for um, the following year. Cost cost of paint is about ninety thousand. Yes, sir. Okay, that's a three. Is it an A, B? When you're looking at the three B. Three B. Okay. Roof need a metal roof on the entire school. That's a work in process. Okay. That that's one uh, roof that's uh, being replaced because of the hurricane. And then we need dirt to fill in sinkhole. Is there a sinkhole or is there a hole? It's Not by the playground. Roof leader runs out and it's probably, you know from the uh, downspout right okay it's I got probably you where a roof leader runs out and uh, it's supposed to be open and it's gradually got filled in with dirt but we can check that that's why I put a work order there okay and around the safety or that solar panel it's probably where the contractors that they hired to or they got their uh, grant money from when they okay. dug their trench right it's just it's sunk down, so we just need to bring some more dirt. Okay, so that's more of a work order then. Yes, sir. Okay, <clears throat> Richlands Elementary School. What they like to do is, you know, in the front, when you're leaving the parking in front of Richlands Elementary School, when you, just before you get to the Cothorn Road again, that exit driveway, if we could put a rolled curb right there so they could use that for um, overfill parking. You just need to cut the curb there. That's a work order? Yes, sir. They won't use it very often, but at the same time, when, when you got, they're using it anyway, so just cut the curb there so they can use it for these opening school days and big event days. Richlands High School. You know, I was talking. I was talking with the principal there, and he said that uh, we could put everything on two or three years from now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So for Richlands High School, we got the gymnasium bleacher replacement. Um, gymnasium bleachers are working, but I'll let you go ahead and explain it. They're Brian. aging. We. Uh, installed last year some steps in there there's still been some some spectator injuries there's gaps between the bleachers and they're just they're aging so we've had mm -hmm. a few instances of injury 
So it's a safety issue, we're saying. Now, one of the things that will happen, um, we have to be careful about once, once we put new bleachers in, they have to, they have to comply with the new codes. And in that process, we'll be losing seats. Okay. So that's a 2A. Paving gravel behind the cafeteria. Okay. So you have the paved dirt area behind the cafeteria is unsafe. It's filled with roots and potholes. It's where our teachers and staff leave in the afternoons for the back parking lot and where the custodians go down to the dumpsters. The first thing we need to do is cut all the trees down. Yeah. And dig up all the roots. And the tree roots, yeah. Because the tree roots will tear up any kind of work that we do. So that's something we'd have to find out is are there any memorial trees there? That's, the, that's what stopped us in the process two years ago, talking about this, is we don't know, because those are two big, right. beautiful trees in the back. Yeah, that's one of the things we'll have to take a look at. That's, I'm going to put a TBD on okay. that one. Front parking lot restructure. It's long term. So you want some bollards and mm -hmm. some just some permanent solutions for the traffic, but it's a it's yeah. not a pressing issue right now. So, then th so for everybody else, the front parking lot restructuring is um, they changed the traffic flow so um, the traffic flow easier in and out of school. I mean, at the beginning of school, into school and stuff. And in that process, they've had to use some cones and barricades to make that happen. What he would like to do is go ahead and make those cones and barricades more of a permanent structure in the parking lot. That way. They don't have to keep on putting them out all the time and bring them back in, and then also they don't get damaged and, and just, or or stolen in the process too. So that's that would be a, a three. Do we have now? Let me ask you this: Do we have any other schools that we have permanent permanent structures like that to direct traffic besides Little Islands? We have, yes, sir. We got some. I mean, some of the other schools are wooden posts, but we have them up as far as Lion Road, and okay. that's something too that if we're looking at. We need to go to that back road, the cut through road, going back to Heritage, and we're going to fix it, fix all of it at one time. That's in here too. Mm -hmm. So, how would you? Is that something that needs to be done this coming year, or the next two or three years, or next five years? I mean, it's managed right now. It's a, it's a managed. I think in the grand scheme of things, it, it could be three to five years out. We'd be okay with it. I mean, okay. I don't think it's a, we got an you. urgent need right now. Put it as a 3B for right now. Main ditch in front of the school reinforcement. Okay, we've got a ditch that's eroding. It was identified in the capital improvement plan, but uh, sounds like we've got more of it. Sorry for jumping in. No, it's please. the whole ditch from Richlands all the way to um, Heritage. Uh, we we along the ball fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all the way down. When I got there about two and a half years ago, you could it was ten feet from our corner post of the baseball field to the edge of the ditch, and right now I'd say it's what five, or five six feet. We, yeah. Okay. Again, get a zero turn through there. Mm -hmm. So that's an A. All right, you got paint, and they were on the list for, in the capital improvement plan for next year. Is that still on the schedule? For the work order, yeah. The work order, or for the work order, we'll take care of that because okay, the con we had a contractor that no longer works with us that was supposed to take care of this. This is one of the last things they were supposed to have done, but they didn't ever do it, which they weren't paid for. But I understand. Okay. Door replacement, building repair, athletic storage facilities are in disrepair. Please repair and replace doors, remove old cinder block walls, and repaint the facilities. Okay, you got a couple work orders in there. Is that something that's a work order or? <coughs> yeah, it's in process. Okay, so it's in process. <clears throat> the 
Window replacements, replace windows in 500 building. In room 503 specifically. It's our adaptive no. EC classroom. Yeah. Now we're not allowed to replace it with plexiglass though. So if we replace them, they have to be replaced with some a safety a safety glass. But <coughs> all right, is that something that's uh, needed this coming year? A safety issue. It is. It's a safety issue. Okay. It's a two-way. Light poles. The light poles in the baseball softball complex were damaged by the hurricane. One is leaning, and I think that's in process right now. It is. It's supposed to be done. It's supposed to be done. Okay. Is it, has it, is it, you know, I think the, we were told everything has been finished. The conduit and all that has been reattached. I do believe that one pole is still leaning. I'll check it today. I haven't looked at it in a week or so. Okay. We were told it was been Okay. I'll check it out today. Okay. Drainage and conditions at rear of the gym. At the rear of the gym, there are two mobile classrooms and several storage can containers. The conditions are extremely wet and often floods. Okay. So that's a. So that's a three. It's just a problem. Three A. Three A. Bridges to Athletic and ag Agricultural Science Facilities. It's complete. Okay. Tree removal. Okay, the tree in the middle. It's a hurricane damaged tree right in the middle of the campus. Yeah, just there, I just lost it. Okay. The okay. court yard needs to be removed due to a safety issue. Is that a work order? Yes, sir. Stadium visitor side bleacher replacement. Visitor side bleachers are aging. Replaced with new bleachers on visitor side of the stadium before they become unsafe. Okay, so that's a it's long term. They're, that's a they're three. still workable right now. Yeah. I know we got to do the home side. It'd be nice if we could do the the other side too. I think there's other there's other schools that need bleachers too. Okay, track resurface. Okay, track continues to develop cracks, rubberize or resurface our tracks so that we can provide the safest possible surface for our athletes. We've done some work and stuff out there and continue to do work out there. We're having issues as far as with the drainage, mm -hmm. which is creating more issues with sinkholes out there around the track. So we're, we're kind of chasing ourselves on this one, sir. So. All right, so we need to... Well, I mean, we've been out there in the last four years. There, there's um, four or five different work orders where we've hired a contractor to go out there to do work. Not on top, and also we've had our grounds guys going out there trying to chase the uh, drainage system, which is right inside of the track, which is having sinkholes, which is affecting the track, causing more issues for us to have to send somebody else back out there to kind of chase ourselves around. We need to get some kind of civil work done, or yes, sir. We need some help. So I just put it on there for the notes that we need a civil engineer to assess the drainage requirements. Okay. Barrier fence at the rear, rear of the school. At the rear of the 300 building are three mobile classroom units. These units directly border the neighborhood homes, including a dog pen and a garage shop area. Please install a fence around it. So that's for two. It's yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is right up next to it. It's, yeah. it's, is there? It's okay. 2A, then I put on there. Um, carpet, replace carpet and bandroom media center. I think there's a work order. 
41.05.12? Yeah, it was a work order that, that we were told we needed to put on the capital outlay. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a three, and the condition of it is? It's not torn. It's workable right now. It's not something that would be an immediate. Okay. 3B. Paint. Paint. Repaint. Pardon? That's what we need to get at schedule. That's, so, that's on our schedule to do. We okay. just haven't scheduled it. This year? Or We're looking at doing it for the summer for next year. Okay. But this summer then? Yes, sir. So we've already got funding for it? No, sir. Not yet. Okay. So 3A. And the estimated cost for that is? I had to go back and look, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. So... And track resurfacing, going back to track resurfacing to the estimated cost for that, if we get a civil engineer to take a look at it. Well, the track resurfacing is 135000 Okay. That doesn't include uh, any civil engineer to take care of the, the drainage. So let's take it up to $150,000. Probably one seventy five to two. Okay. Okay, remove temporary hut wall. Take out wall in hut one. Currently, there's a wall in hut one making the space into two tiny classrooms. It's not conducive to classroom space when more than 10 students are in a class. Both sides are needed. It creates a potential class classroom supervision I issue. All right. It'd be a long term because we've been able to get away with not using it as a classroom right now. It's used as an IEP meeting space. So okay. we don't need it immediately as a classroom. Okay. Replace fog damaged windows. Large small cafeteria and student commons area windows have failing seals and have, have fog. Replace with new windows. To three. Wood. I'm in there. I guess they keep the rain out, but it just, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's. Okay. We have a tremendous amount of windows around the school system that are three B need replacing. And the only reason why I'm saying three B, look, I'd like to go ahead and get them done. At the same time, though, we know what's going to happen when we go into phase two of this. It's going to, I mean, we can say, yeah, we'll put it in three A now, but then it'll, it'll come out probably pretty quick when we have to cut cut our funding down from seventeen million down to. Five million or three million or whatever the number is going to be. Fenced in practice areas. Frequently have unapproved organizations utilizing our practice facilities behind the school, as well as instances of damage to the playing surface due to vandalism, motor vehicles. Okay, to protect our sizable investment of equipment, reduce field maintenance and repair costs, protect. From liability, please construct a high fence around our school school's practice complex. So that would be a three. And it'd be uh, something that's needed right away. I mean, it's been that way a long time. A have we allowed, have we allowed um, uh, people to take vehicles in there now doing circles still? And they, they're in there doing it every so often. So yeah. they, we've did, I think two or three times since I've been there, we've had to go back in and fill in ruts. Okay. Tennis courts. Tennis courts are in disrepair. We surface the courts, install new nets, and install new fencing. You know, at one time we had talked about putting um, mobile classrooms over the top of the, those tennis courts. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, though, it's... The school doesn't have any tennis courts at all right now, and, and for the tennis team, they have to actually go to a, to another facility to make that happen. Do we need to go ahead and the update one, that or, or, uh, or remove them completely? Well, and I think the one caveat is I think in order to host a match, we would need a minimum of four. There's only two there, so we already know we won't be able to host a match. So it's right. just a practice facility. They're still using it. They're still using it? <clears throat> they are. They do. They practice out there, but we've got um, the – 
poles that hold the nets up are actually pulling the pavement up. They're leaning in. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's on, I would say it's on its last leg, but they're still using the facility. But we know we can't host a match. So is, so is that a three or a four? Three, three A? Okay. Richlands High School, Hunters Creek Elementary School, Connecting Road. This is the one you said that we yeah. could, this will go in hand with the other one Daniel said. Mm -hmm. We'll put speed bumps out there, but now they're drowning all in the grass and stuff, and they've tore all the grass and stuff out there now. Just need to put ballers up there. Okay. Well, there's going to be a lot of ballers. So. 3A. Security cameras. It looks like we got some in progress. Yep. They're there this week. Okay. Storage building. Several wooden storage buildings are deteriorating on campus. Okay, need contents emptied and buildings removed. We like more permanent storage solutions for the buildings. These buildings, which have a significant number of our campus, are unsightly, need cleaning and painting. So that's a three. Do we know how many storage? Buildings we're looking at. Some of this work is already in progress. We've emptied one of the wooden buildings. Some of the ones at the rear, I think there's a total of four or five wooden buildings and five. How many? I don't know how many Connex boxes we have out there. Yeah, they got four or five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. So we have Connex boxes out there to replace them. So we need to, in a, a, a storage building, what's, what's the average cost on a storage building? It goes on size. Yeah. 15,000? Yes, sir, for a good size of them. So you're talking about if you got five of them, then you're talking about six, about... Uh, well, some of the buildings aren't that big out there. I mean, some of them are the, like the ones that come off the trailer, you know, they you. drop. So if we put a, a 20 by 24 or 24 by 36 or something building out there, that might can get rid of some of these little buildings and have a more centralized location. And we could also get rid of some of these content boxes, too, that we we got scattered all throughout his campus. And we've continued over the last couple of years to, to declutter and take some of the older things that are you know, props and things like that and get them off the campus. So we probably don't have as much need anymore for the for a significant amount of storage space. We can we can continue to narrow down one, what we one need. One building, two buildings, three buildings? It depends on the size. Say two, just do two for right now. Okay. So I just said two buildings of adequate size to accommodate needed materials. Notice how I said needed materials. <laughs> That's right. Okay. The next one's complete. All right, and the next ones, if you guys don't mind, what I did was while I was going through this, I realized that we've gone through the roofing process before so I categorized a lot of those already for it's a three A and three B. What's that? It's three A and three B. Oh uh, for Oh roofs. roofs, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. Windows continue to replace rusting steel windows in the 400 hall. We've got that in the capital improvement plan for the following year, year two. Is that something that needs to be moved up? So we'll make it a 3B. HVAC equipment replace heat recovery unit for auditorium. That's in that was scheduled in our capital improvement plan for this year doesn't work I mean as far as okay it hasn't worked well, that's a, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right that's a 3a if it doesn't work 
Window air conditioning units. Replace old window air conditioning units in the 400 building. I mean, it, and what? It, and if there's one fails, we'll just we'll put a replacement. Yeah, we we do have um, in this process with Capital Outlet. We talked about this earlier, Paige, but uh, we've got this these categories called all sites, where we do have a. a pool of money because we don't know what's going to happen sometimes during the middle of the year. So a lot of times when you when so, there's an issue that comes up and we come out and we place it right away like a wa hot water heater or an air conditioning unit or something like that, we pull out the all sites. And so we leave a little bit of money in there. We want to dedicate to the schools what we can, but we also know that we've got some ad hoc emergencies that we have to address too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vocational building, package heat pump and roofing curbs. 3B. 3B. Okay. Sandridge. Repair cinder block foundation of the temporary of the temporary building. Is that a work order? Yes, sir. Install hot and chilled water pumps. They're already purchased. Is that a work order? Or that's actually going to be a contract of service. Okay. Um, is it? Is that something? This seeing how we already got them. Is that something we do this year, or or put it in the capital? Just as, as funding permits, uh, we may be able to do it this year. Okay. So I'm going to put a 3A right now, just in case we don't. In case our all sites funding runs out before before we can get to it for this year. Underground fuel tank, you said that's a it's a two B. So we classify them as. Silverdale. Um, yes, sir. Jump down. Did I jump down? Yeah. Two B. Sandwich. Sorry about that. Something. Should be now about B building. Should be yeah. There. yeah. Okay, so B building is a 3A for the roof. And the cafeteria and A building roof is also a 3A. They were all roofed at the same time years mm -hmm. ago, so that's why they, they're grouped together over there. Yeah. Approximately so how many years old are, are those roofs? I think they were done in the early 90s. Okay, so about 25 years. And the underground fuel tank. We've got those three Bs on the other. Three Bs, okay. Southwest Elementary School playground equipment. It's in process, mm -hmm. so they're working on that right now. We had a large piece of playground equipment that was deemed unsafe and so we, we're in the process of replacing it right now the hot water heater for, for the cafeteria um, that's in pretty rough shape we do need to replace that we, we actually bought a water heater and then someone else has started leaking really bad so we just took that when it came in and put it someplace else but it's a 3A 3A okay Okay, replace old beach bleachers on a football field, Southwest Middle School. So replace the old rusty and broken bleachers with 10 new mixed size bleachers for the athletic field. And that's at Southwest Middle. This was a carryover from the previous year, so mm -hmm. I maintained it on the list. Okay. Something that's needed. I mean, Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Build a concession stand with bathrooms for. Okay, the concession stand was submitted and approved construction has not started yet. We'd like to add it to the year's request. Is this um, a three or four three A or four A? Okay, 4A, 
And most of the other middle schools do have concession stands. Okay, treat entire school for termites. And, yeah, this was a carryover. I've not seen or heard much complaint this year. Yeah. We've, uh, we've done a lot of spot treatment there. It's okay. just it was suggested by us that we needed to treat the whole facility. I don't know if, if that amount of money would do that. It's just um, we can continue to do it at work orders or we can try to... We'll leave it at let's put it leave it 3A. 3A and it's probably something we'll cut out. But. Okay. All right, Southwest High School. Science lab tables update new. Okay, so they need new uh, tables. They have 48 person tables, or they need 32 tables. We don't have the science lab tables right now, do we? We do not. Okay, so that's a. Three or that'd be a four A. Mm -hmm. Ra rails on home bleachers. Rails need to be installed on home football bleachers. Uh, we've had fence slip and fall without these hand rules rails. Now, do they have do they have rails on the um, visitor side bleachers? I don't think so, because it says. It's, yeah, it says it, says it needs possible. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's a request that, that he's made several times. It's just um, because the uh, steps are so narrow, mm -hmm. if we were to put a rail like in the, in the middle of between the two, it may limit uh, access up and down right. also. Um, would, you put, would you put rails up on the sides? If of you put them on the side, it blocks the seats. Mm -hmm. um, right. So they can't get into the, to the, you know, to the, uh, mm -hmm. to the seating. Um, we probably need to give someone to take a look at it and just give us our options, but I think that this one is not going to be something we're going to be able to do very easily. Okay, that would probably be expensive. Are, now, are these, are these bleachers because we talked about Richlands High School bleachers, the visitor side bleachers, and we've got other bleachers out there too. Are these uh, comparable? <coughs> How do these rank amongst the other bleachers? As far as one, is one safer than the other? Or age or conditions. Age, um, age conditions. I mean, they're all sturdy. Okay. It's just that they were built to a different code. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in I'm going to say need engineering assessment to see how it can be done. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Sir. Because where they were built originally. Pair of potholes, several potholes for failing we're paving. The asphalt money, if we get any funding for asphalt, it's not okay. a duplicate. So that, that would be in the. That would be in the all sites. Original build, building roof. Okay, the original building. Um, the most that's urgent our, roof project. And that's our number one request. Uh, we're asking the architect when they uh, bid that out for all the hurricane damage, mm -hmm. the additional roof that was not included, if they would be able to bid that as an alternate. Right. And uh, I just don't know how it could be funded, if it could be funded through this or, or through other okay. means. So what we're looking at right now is with Hurricane Florence, we know that Southwest High School gym got demolished. I mean, and the, the roof there branch just pouring through and stuff. Well, they're in the process of replacing that section, a good section of that main building. But the other the other section of the roof, 
while it's had patches and repairs over the years and stuff, it's at a time where it needs to be replaced as well, but it wasn't covered under the insurance. So while we have the insurance, I mean, while we have the roofers doing the insurance work, it would be more, it would be, uh, it would be better if they actually come in and do the rest of the work as well and save some money in the process because you don't have to lay up, I mean, stage um, additional, I mean, get another person in there to do the work and stuff. So there's a little bit of economy of scale by doing that. So that's what he was talking about there. And the reason why I'm going on a little bit about it, just in case other people actually take the time to watch this stuff, then maybe they need to understand why we're talking about this in that, that level of detail. So okay. 3A? Okay. Replace two of the three chillers. The chillers are 20 years old. Um, yes, we're, we're replacing, you know, one's being replaced this year. And if we can continue to replace another. 3A? Yes, sir. Okay. And one thing about the chillers, too, that many in the community may not know is when a chiller goes, we lose, I mean, we can lose a wing of the school. And so all of a sudden, just getting it fixed in, that, in, that, in the short term, ideally if it happens during the spring or fall season, then the temperature isn't going to be that bad. But once we get into the winter or we get into the warmer months, then all of a sudden that, <coughs> those rooms aren't going to be uh, conducive to instruction. So. So if we lose we lose a chiller, we lose a wing. Okay, Stateside Elementary. Sidewalks are needed for a path toward the neighborhood from the school and these students. Okay, one of the things we're looking at with that, let me see if I can pull this up. It could be. And I think there's no sidewalks right now for anyone with the new neighborhood houses going up in there. There's no sidewalks as those in walkers mm -hmm. and you know, right. walkers increase. So So here we have Stateside Elementary. And while you don't see this, there's a lot of development that's actually happened in here now. There's probably a good, about 100 houses maybe, give or take. Okay. And there's a road, and the road's actually going down this way now. And so the development has already discussed this with us, and they want to put a walkway across so students can walk across the road right here, in this area right here. The problem is, is now that they get over how do we get them into the campus? Now, the easy thing to say is, well, let's put a sidewalk in there. But one of the things we have to look at also is when we do this, is you have to remember that um, not only do you have a sidewalk, but you got traffic, you got vehicle traffic. So if we put a sidewalk here, we're still gonna have to cross somewhere to get them in here. So if we put a sidewalk Right here, that's where all the swells are. We'll have to get some civil engineering to take care of it, to address it with us. And then we have to bring them down this way, but we're still crossing vehicle traffic. And twice. So these are things that we're trying to look at. We can put a sidewalk in, but where do we put it in without getting them to cross across traffic? And that's one of the things we're concerned about is with the students. Do we, because this is an elementary school, do you want, do you want the young ones who are walking from the neighborhood to start walking across across the driveways so it's a, it's a dilemma we're trying to address right now and if you guys have any ideas would it be a good way of doing it please let me know because we're, we're, we're noodling it right now trying to figure out how to, how to make this happen because I can understand with the neighborhood this this is a local neighborhood so I mean back in well, back in my days, which is a long time ago, I mean, it's not unusual that we walk to school. Right now, what we're doing is we have buses uh, picking up and transporting back and forth because there is no reasonable way of getting them into, into the campus without going over several roads. 
But that's one of the things we're looking at right there, what can be done. Would we be still providing transportation with buses? Or if we well, right now, walk, right, so now we are. right now we are. But at the same time, I mean, when when you think about the other side of it, though, if I've got if I've got a house, I'm right here, and I've got my kids. Do I want them to go and take the bus, or do I let them walk across? Now that's one of the things we take a look at. The only thing I can possibly think of is is if we have some kind of a walkway right right here, going right through here. It'll take them into, it'll take, it would take them in there and then we just have one walkway across there. And then in the morning and the afternoon, we just have to have some kind of a, some kind of traffic control right there. So that does at least get past the parent drop off right. line because they're, yeah. And then, so the only traffic that should be going back in there will be staff and buses. Right. So that is an easier control point. So that's one of the things they're looking at right there. So that's where that request was coming from. That's a 2A to me. It's 2A? Okay. And then the crosswalk, that's something that the development's already going to be doing. So that's other funds right there. Dusty and Daniel, I was just putting, I was just making estimates, but let's say if they have a walkway right here and we bring a sidewalk here and sidewalk all the way up to here. Is there a so, swell in this? I'm not sure. There might be a swell. I think right there's there. a swell in there, sir. Yeah, so that's one of the things we have to take a look at. I'm not sure if we can do we, it. Um, can you zoom in on the picture a little bit, please, sir? Yeah, one thing we swell. could, yeah, Go ahead. Well, I mean, there is a swell in there. Mm -hmm. We can measure it out and see, because you know, at Meadowview, sister school, but at Meadowview, they have a sidewalk going through it down. But I think it's the middle one. Yeah. But um, So maybe we could just, ex if we could just extend the sidewalk come along on this edge right here, I don't know if it would impact the swell or not. But that's something we'll have to take a look at. All right. We'll, we'll look at it, see what we can do. But if we did do something like that, about what do you think the cost would be estimating? Well, the sidewalk for that long run is going to be probably 80 just for the sidewalk for prepping and concrete. Okay. Oops. Okay. Summer sale. Replace the drainage system. Drainage systems in both courtyards are in bad condition. Flooding occurs even in light rain. Have to get a civil engineer, but it does happen frequently. This year hasn't made it any better. So, <clears throat> what is it? 3A? Yes, sir. Sidewalk repair. The sidewalk between the cafeteria and the pre K area is badly cracked and uneven. So is this a... Mm -hmm. If it's a safety issue, then Dan, if you know anything about that. I mean, we just, just like parkwood is all broken up, but we can't throw it. If we keep throwing everything on all sites, we're not going to have any money to do yeah, anything. Yeah, so where are, we, where are we talking about it now? It, I think he's talking about to your left there where there's two mobiles are right up from right across there to your right. That sidewalk right there. This right here? The one uh, uh, right here. parallel to those. Yes, sir. Daniel, does that look? Yes, sir. But also, that causes drainage issues too. It blocks the, uh, the groundwater from, uh, yeah, never mind. from getting away from those buildings. Okay. That's one of the reasons we put a civil engineer in there, something they could look at and see if there's any other way we could come up with a way to drain that area. Okay.
So that's a. Zero three A on this one, and then the park would will fit in there. We had it underneath all sites, so we okay. try to balance out the two. All right, playground, sand and mulch. That's just a work order. Yes, sir. Hot water pumps are failing and need a replacement for the boiler room. Those are a three A. Three A. All right, guys, we've been doing this about an hour. You want to take about a five-minute break? All right, let's take about a five-minute break, and then uh, we're getting there. So. All right, guys, Swansboro Elementary. And the first thing we have is awning from main building to the mobiles. Nope. <laughs> okay, students are often... Students are often soaked traveling from the mobile units into the main building. We need something to protect students from the rain so they are not soaked. Coats. All right. I think we all agree that awnings and canopies are needed at several of the schools. It's a, it's a, it was a three, it was a two. Three B. Right. The what? Oh, CIP year three. Okay, yeah. What we have? Do you mind if I borrow your piece of paper, Will? Okay. What we have? I didn't give you get you a copy of this, but I explained how the capital outlay uh, program works. Right. And what we do is we take a lot of different uh, pieces of parts to build the capital outlay. The capital outlay is basically our annual need. Okay, it's not the long-term construction needs. It's just the annual need for um, capital items within the school system. That includes uh, the capital improvement program. And a lot of people get confused when we talk about the capital improvement program and the capital outlay program. Well, capital outlay is just what's going to happen next year, okay? Our capital improvement program is where we take a look at the facilities and what are, the, what are the structural needs of the facilities and, and the paving in, uh, for the next five to ten years, okay? So this is a long-term projection what's needed, and also capital improvement program also includes what do we need as far as new schools and stuff too. But what we need for capital maintenance over five to ten years and construction. So we take, we take the capital improvement program and we, and we look at it and we, we feed that information into the capital outlay. These, it's going to be part of the request that we go for, put in the capital outlay program. So when you see the CIP, that means it was in the capital improvement program that's already been not built. I mean, our long term projections. And we're saying, okay, well, this is what it. Um, and so when I'm looking at something and I see where it says CIP year six through 10, that means that. Um, in the capital improvement program that we have already in place, we're projecting that we were going to get replaced within six to ten years. Some of them, if you see it says CIP year one, that means, well, next year we planned on, it was scheduled in the capital improvement program to be replaced. Now, that doesn't mean it will get replaced. What it means is it's been identified that we need to replace it next year. Now we see, see if we have the funds for it. Does that make sense? Okay, so for example, CIP year three, that means in the 21, 22 school year, um, it was identified that we needed to do something with the awnings from the main building to the mobiles. I think what we've identified for the other awnings and canopies also is a 3B. We'd like to, we'd like to get them done within the next two or three years. I mean, it's something we want to do. But, 
and a lot of them have that request, and we just see, have to see how the money flows. Okay. Okay. All right, drainage repair between main building and, and the mobiles. That's a civil engineering thing, and that might be... Well, I need to get help with that with FEMA, sir. With FEMA, so that, that, that might be in other funding. Okay. And what's happening is, um, just, just so you are aware of it, is with the hurricane that came in with the 35 inches of rain that came through, we, we saw flooding at Swansboro Elementary School and it impacted several classrooms. I think about six classrooms yeah, got flooded. So what, what happened there is um, while insurance is going to help us pay for, pay for the classrooms to be fixed and everything, FEMA is also came in, coming in and saying, well, wait a minute now. You had flooding there. Is there a way we can prevent the flooding in the future? That's called mitigation in, in FEMA's terms. And so we're discussing with them, we're putting together a package right now to see if we can actually get the mitigation done by FEMA to reduce the flooding in that area. So we may be digging out the swells, we may be doing some kind of, um, uh, so find some way to restrict the water from flowing through the parking lot and through the through the yeah. playground areas We've in that had area. a couple heavy rains since, and it's come up close. Um, yeah. So it's definitely a concern. So it's definitely something we want to do. Okay. So I think the next one also fall right underneath that. Your Rest parking. Restructure the parking lot? Yes, sir, because of the swells and drainage issues. And the civil engineer probably have to address that at the same time. Right. See and if it were even permissible. We also met... So with some folks with DP, I mean Department of uh, Transportation and um, an outside company too, and they were looking at some things. So mm -hmm. I'm not yeah, sure what the next meeting is for that. Yeah, using the existing uh, paving uh, uh, parking lots and uh, driveways that we already have, um, DOT is working uh, to determine if we can streamline or or create a more efficient way of doing the kiss and drops and and for the students and stuff. So they're looking at that right now as well. And we should be getting a report back from them fairly soon. I haven't heard anything yet, have yeah, you? Yeah, I haven't heard anything from that first meeting. So in that process, we'll probably we'll probably defer that until, and, and let me tell you something else before I, before I go on. Mm -hmm. What Paige has done down there as far with, uh, with how they do their kiss and drops and student pickups and, and drop offs is amazing. I mean, with the limited space they have, They've got several queues that they work them through and stuff, and they've maximized every every inch of that space that they can. They've done a good job. It's, it's tricky, but yeah, if we can get everyone to follow it, it, it does work. And I've looked at it for years now from a couple different angles, trying to try to make it more efficient. Um, it still kind of takes a, a the time, you know, it takes a little while because right. our buses and our cars have to utilize the same space, so it makes for a long dismissal. But I think the plan in place is probably the best given the resources mm -hmm. that we have. So I'm putting this as a NCDOT review yeah, DOT. Mm -hmm. and to be determined yep. what we're going to do with that one. Okay, the next one, replace urinal with toilet in the boys' restrooms. The boys' restrooms for grades K through 3 have only one stall but have two urinals. If it's possible, we'd like to exchange a urinal for a toilet with a stall. The younger students have difficulties using the urinals properly, and the line is often long for one stall. Right, and this has kind of been a, a teacher concern for a while now, um, and I, I've seen it <coughs> as well. Um, that the younger ones, they just, sorry guys, but you know, <laughs> they, they struggle, and they don't want to use them, and so they wait and wait. So we thought if we could switch them out, maybe we would be more efficient with our bathroom usage. All right, do we, now what about the other schools, elementary schools? Do we do that with the other elementary schools? You know, our campus is a little I'll unique say, because it's... Well, there's, 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 yeah, <laughs> ours is a little unique. Most of your elementary right. schools. Yeah, because they have the quad, and so they have the little bathroom within, uh, within the four built four classrooms mm -hmm. and then they have a little center section and then the student bathrooms right there right so we don't have um, besides the new building which was just our left as our specials um, we don't have any like big you know nice group bathrooms that everyone else 
Morton yeah. has quads, but they have more urinals in their bathrooms. I mean, there's more toilets than, right. yeah. than just the one. Parkwood has quads, too. Okay. Process. All right. So how do we? So how do we categorize this? It's, it's not mandated by not mandated by law. Yeah, it's I mean it's not issue. the most pressing. Three, I agree. Four instructional need. Probably. Yeah, I, mean, if, I think it kind of impacts yeah, time know. out of class. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something. We're on camera. I can't yeah. say it. Yeah, <laughs> well, that'd be good. But, uh, it kind of goes with the next one though too. Um, all right. So I'm going to put down three uh, C. Another bathroom issue. Four. Bathroom near cafeteria. Okay, so you want to have a bathroom over by the cafeteria. So when folks come to visit our school, which is quite frequently, especially to have lunch and such, um, we don't, there's one individual bathroom that's in the office area, but if you've ever gone in our school, you have to go in and around and down a little hall, and there's one little bathroom there. So, again, if our students or visitors are in the cafeteria, they have to go down and outside and around to a bathroom. So, or through the little, right there in the little main office, which is already very congested because um, it's small. Um, so that's kind of a, again, it's the age of our, and the layout mm -hmm. of our building. But, yeah, there's no, the bathroom access is very limited. Okay. And again, for folks to have to go out and around the building to access the bathroom is ideal. Okay. So, how do we want to categorize it, categorize this? It's it's a it's not an instructional need. It's, a, it's more of accommodation to visitors. Five. Five. Okay. Is it needed this year? Coming year? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> uh, we, we can continue to wait. Okay. A 5B. Yes. All right. HVAC equipment. Replace building 300 heat pumps. That was in the capital improvement plan for next year. Is it still a high um, ticket item? We're, we're bouncing back and forth because of the 1 in 200 That's spaces were problem. due. We're going to try to do some of those this year mm -hmm. because of the hurricane. Some of that um, didn't work out, and the ceilings will have to be uh, taken out of the buildings to get to that equipment. So what we're looking at is possibly doing this this year because they have separate mechanical spaces. So we're looking at getting pricing on that. So we, we kind of want to flop maybe what we our so proposals. we want to do it for this year. Um, I'm looking at doing it this summer if we can. So you might with, just with take it all out and then maybe you look at doing the, the one or 200 building next year. Possibly. All right, well, basically I'm going to say this is in process. Yes, sir. And fine. I think they're all about, you know, they're the same age, so we're just, we're having lots of trouble. They're beyond their life expectancy. Okay. Yes. All right, Swansboro Middle School. Update camera system school-wide. They'd like to have um, six cameras replaced, six new cameras. Um, everything's being, anything that's bad is being replaced right. with the hurricane. Um, they've got um, one of our um, higher number of cameras okay. on their campus already. Um, granted, they are basically two campuses. Um, I know they got it in the CIP for yeah. year five, so you want to make that? I just left it as a 2C, yeah. 2C? Okay. <clears throat> Entry door locks. Um, I kind of include this into my department. The all funding. sites. Yeah, all sites for safety and security. Okay. Okay. Track needs repaving. All right. 
And it says lower field track is beginning to deteriorate, needs to be repaved so no one gets hurt during practice and meets. Do you take a look at it? Take a look at it? Yes, sir. We haven't looked at it. Okay. Should be determined. Uh, yeah. Let's go back and take a look at that. <coughs> okay. Desks and chairs. Continued update of aging science tables and classroom desks. Seven nine classrooms. Seven of nine class science classrooms are in need of minimum of eight tables each. That's 56 tables. Okay. <coughs> Have we ever replaced any tables, Murray? Not for science tables at Smallsville. Okay. So that's instructional. Make it an A. Okay. And we may change that again, too, because later on we've got a we've got a line item for um classroom furniture so this may change when we get there okay repaving potholes at swansworth middle school several areas along bus route on swansworth middle school campus need repairing potholes been filled with gravel but continue okay so it's, that's something that uh We'll order in and we'll go from there. Okay. Windows. Windows throughout the campus are beginning to break. Some are currently taped, which is not safe for students to be around. Most windows are old single pane windows. Windows in front lobby, in front and back hallways. If they're broken, they should be just they a should be a work order. They should, they've probably already been prepared. So work order. Just a work order. Okay. If it's just a, you know, right. some that are cracked or broken. Okay, window treatments. Most classrooms are in need of updated blinds. Sun exposure in the afternoon makes it difficult to see in some classrooms and fades furniture and carpet. You've got 12 classrooms. We replace a lot of blinds each year with just local funds. Uh, it just depends. Okay, we can so look to see how long it's been. They've been there, and if it's a maintenance thing, we may can replace them with. All right, with so I'm going to put that other funding then for like operational. It, it may have to wait till next year, but we may can do that with local funds. Okay. Auditorium. Auditorium would like a drop-down screen to use in the area. So that's instructional, and they don't have a drop-down screen right now. Do they have any screens that? What are they used for? Not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that they have something. <coughs> Even if they got a portable screen that they probably use right now. I'm assuming. Yeah, I think that I've seen. I feel like I've seen one in there before. Okay, so is that a? That's. I'll ask the instructional folks in the classroom in the in the room. Is that what is that? A B C. Because you know my my answer is A for everything. I guess it depends if they have a temporary yeah. or something they can use or not. Yeah. Um. Cafeteria and old media center, eighteen most urgent roofing project. So that's a 3B. Paint. Paint exteriors of the school trim, old CT building, gym, locker rooms, and locker rooms in several rooms. So that's a three. Where, where are they at on the schedule, Daniel? We're working in that area, but money. So is that something that's needed right now? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, down there it is. Yes, sir. So 3A? Yes, sir. Asbestos removal. Okay. And ceiling in the 8th grade hallway. I think we put in 3. Probably 3B. Okay. Window replacement. Windows need to be replaced in the lobby, cafeteria, cafeteria hallway, encore buildings, and main gym.
so it, this is almost a it's not a duplicate so that's a three uh, it's probably a three C okay second most urgent roofing project that's a three A that's over in the annex building yes sir there's, there's two classroom buildings here okay then replace that HVAC equipment in the Swansville Middle School Annex building. <coughs> we have, we've replaced some ourselves just as a maintenance project there. It's mm -hmm. just, it would be nice because they're, just because they're failing, you know, the salt air down there just like at the elementary school. It's right. So a, is that an A or a B? Those are original. So that would be an A. Okay. All right, Swansboro High School, bleachers. Bleachers are old and dangerous in some areas. Now, I don't, I'm not sure what that means yet, but. They do a wolf order and our guys got us fixed. Okay. Okay. Classroom to consultation rooms. Okay, um, when you first walk into Swansboro High School, on the left-hand side, there's a classroom. I think uh, Mr. Laughinghouse is using it right now. And uh, they've had a lot of um, crisis management that they've been addressing in, in the Swansboro area. And so what uh, Ms. Ms. Dr. Gross has requested is that uh, they take that one classroom right there because they do have the space available and section it off into three conference rooms or three consultation rooms because that one classroom also has access to, I mean, has a backdoor access to so that they can get in. And so she was saying that way the guidance counselors can talk to people individually without bringing them in front of everybody as well. So she was asking for that. Um, I told her we'd put this on the list and for consideration. What it would mean is take that classroom and partition it up into three, three different consultation rooms, two or three different consultation rooms in that process. Am I saying that right, Daniel? Yes, sir. Okay. So that would be more for an instructional need. That's 4A. That's 4A? That's what they're needing to right now, yes. Yeah. Because so I know they've been having quite, quite a time of it lately. Paving and drainage. The road that leads to the back of the cafeteria is overrun with rainwater most of the time. Needs some drainage improvements. Now we had just put in, we just paved the road, didn't we? The road around the back, we just paved. Okay. This the cafeteria is kind of behind the auditorium, you know where. Um, right. Mike's trailer is at. You go off to take a right to go right. to the back of school where the tennis court's at, where we paved. Yep. To the left <coughs> is the area they're talking about back there. Let's address the drainage issue first, and then we'll see about the pavement and all. Okay. So, we'll look at it as a three A then. Swansboro High School, fencing. Okay, we want some sort of fence that blocks off the courtyard from the parking area behind the lunchroom. This is to prevent anyone from gaining easy access to students during lunch or the school itself. So. So if I'm looking at that, Yes, sir. Open kind of straight ahead. Grassy area, if you. No, this is sir. No, go straight. There you go. That's the courtyard. Right in there, the yes, courtyard sir. right there. By now, anybody can come in that entrance way, and kids can go out that entrance way without anybody really seeing, because there's so much activity with kids and stuff during lunches, unless you have staff stationed on that breezeway or by them chillers kind of lose track of it. it. Now, the other thing we have to be cautious about, if we, if we start putting fencing in there, we've actually yeah, we contained them, we're trapped them. So mm -hmm. by, by code, we actually have to provide access so they, they can come in and out of them anyway. Do you see what I'm saying? For example, it's the same, same scenario that we have at uh, Stateside and um, 
and Meadowview. You got that center court that they work they work out of. Well, we can't lock the doors because if they're in there, they have to get out. They have to. We can't keep them trapped in one specific location. So if we put the fencing in there, it's probably not going to accomplish anything by code. Would it? Um, would it be fencing with a fire gate with a push bar that? From the inside, because what you're doing is trying to prevent really people from coming in as much as going out. See, I mean, from here, I mean, if they're in here, they have to get out. Right. So you have a push bar gate, so they can get out. So, I mean, we could you do a push bar gate so they get out, but you, but you're trying to prevent them from coming in. It's almost like the key code gates that you have right. out here. You had a couple of those. Too. Folks could still access from the outside, but yeah, and in that process, then we all they better do is turn the handle and walk out. I mean, we all these doors are unlocked be because they've got to right get from, from building to building. So, if we go in there, they're going to be unlocked anyway. So, you just put the fencing in there. Mm -hmm. So is it a safety issue? Yeah, I'll say safety issue. Okay. And something that's needed next year? Sure. Okay. And guys, it's easy. I mean, don't don't hesitate to put it for next year because I mean when we go through the process and we start prioritizing, we'll see some other things. We will have to make changes. Okay, but don't don't hesitate just because of that, that you're going, well, I'm not sure what error on the side of caution. I mean, not on the side of caution, but error on the side of let's get it done this year. Then as we go through, we can, we can whittle it down. Okay, HVAC. HVAC works poorly in most areas of the building. It's either extremely hot or cold. I'm not sure where that's at, but. Um, we've been trying to do some work in the main building in 1990. Mm -hmm. Building, um, we replaced a few air handlers already. Um, they're very expensive, and they do need to replace some of them rusting out. We're trying to do a few this summer, so if, if we could, I guess we could say that's a three A, and because of the condition of okay. them, and we're probably going to be looking at maybe eighty thousand dollars just to replace another two or three. Okay. More outside lights around gym area. That's something that'd be. It'd be nice to get some money in our local budget to pay for the power. That's a, that's a different meeting. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, paving and drainage. Okay. So we've got gravel and dirt to fill potholes in the parking lot along the backside of 500, 700. All. Okay. And then. Is it duplicate basically the next one? Next one's duplicate, so I'm taking that out. Place six and, I think it's looking six and seven, but I, that's, we're actually trying to do that this year. Okay. All right, Thompson. Thompson. Paved parking lot. Paved parking area behind the small playground to increase safety for school and the bus staff. That's um. We do have some work with top issues. To come from this area. Okay. So, what are we talking about? Right in here? Yeah. This this area right here. So. Yeah, I think all the bus drivers Let me. Yeah, that inside. Mm. It's mainly staff down there. <laughs> Just let me ask. Let me ask you this question too. If we if we pave this, are we getting close to having too much impervious? Yes, sir. Because we already got rock back there. Sorry for jumping in. But. No, but. But by paving it, do we have to put it, start looking at storage? already attention? got rock because we talked with the city because where the bus is all at, mm -hmm. 
that was all rock a few years. We've already right. talked to the city because we've already established it as a parking area with the gravel rock. They consider that just like asphalt. Okay. That's how come they let us pave the other. Okay. <clears throat> so, how much do you think it would cost to do that? I just put a, a, I put a placeholder in there right now. I didn't want to. Probably 40 to 50. Okay. That was a good placeholder. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a three. Safety room. Safety. Yeah. Two. Safety. Okay. Two A. All right. New windows. Install new energy efficient windows. That's a three. Are the windows working right now? I mean. And they're aluminum. <coughs> they're so they're not an issue with steel windows. So. Three C. Place BCT, BCT tiles in classrooms. Okay. Okay. What we've started doing there is we're trying to put something else besides BCT uh, because the floors are so uneven right. because of the age of the building. And, um, I mean, it's just a matter of uh, the funds. It's, so they're considered more of a safety issue than a, a maintenance issue. Okay, it's more of a safety issue right now then? Dr. Boris, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so, because I mean, it's <coughs> starting to come up in the unevenness of the floor. Okay. Especially with the little little kids and those three and four year olds. Okay, something we need to address next year? If possible, I would I think okay. that's all there is now. Okay. New glass panes, replace plexiglass in two sections of the front lobby to increase visibility and safety. That's just the work orders. Okay. Wood ramp, replace wood ramp to the hut to decrease splintering and improve safety for students and staff. Which, which hut are we talking about? The, uh, when you walk out the back door, right? probably the, the one that's straight ahead. There's a ramp that goes up between it and that little playground area there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, um, and the condition of it needs to be replaced? I mean, we maintain it. It's just an old wood ramp. It just, they, they get kind of slippery. It's a, okay. That's probably more of a safety issue also. Yeah, I would say so. And I know the splintering piece is something we've got to make sure the rails are sanded mm -hmm. down and stuff with child care licensure and that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at all our preschool, we have a lot of wooden ramps still on our preschool units. Okay. All right, then we got the roofs for the cafeteria. That was the 14th most urgent roofing project. And that's a 1B, I mean a 3B. And then the 30th most uh, urgent roofing project is additional shingles. That's a 3C. Okay, Trexler Middle School. Okay, we have um, we have voids around the campus. There are multiple holes around the campus that need to be filled as we have already had staff and students injured from tripping and falling in them. Is that a work order? Yes, sir. Classroom renovations, Bold Richlands Elementary School. That will be part of Trexler Middle School. And that's going to be other funding sources. Okay, awning over the gym entrance. Okay, the entrance to the gym is very slippery when it rains, and we've had multiple students and parents that when they enter the building, particularly on the wheelchair access accessible ramp. that one. So we did two B's for some of these Two B's. Okay. Upgrade exterior lighting. <coughs> That's just 
run the school. The work order is to be determined. Okay. And then we got a uh, hot water heater for cafeteria. That's a, a 3A. 3A, okay. Then we got the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th most urgent roofing replacement. And that's at the 6th grade building. The shop building and the 900 classroom building. So that's the 3B on all of those. All right, White Oak High School. Are you ready? <laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, the first thing we have is uh, resurface the main parking lot. Upper senior lot where the old tennis court is is in dangerous disrepair. Need to be sealed, replaced, res or resurfaced. We're looking at about $38 a square yard at $166,000. So. We can pay you with the um, issues with the storm where we've had all the tra trailers and stuff there. Mm -hmm. It's taking a lot more abuse. We had we just have recently fixed the entrance, right there, where we had a saw cut and all. So it it took more of a beating this past year. Okay, three A. Does it need to be done? When you know, let's go look at, to get a look at it, yes sir. Okay. Sculpt the turnout from front drive. The right turnout of in, in front of the school is too tight to allow buses to turn without blocking cars. Request a a movement of the curb. That's probably a, a civil engineer and a DOT. Um, I know that the arc is greater now on entrances, but uh, I think there's some other equipment there in the right of way. Okay. Uh, light holes and different things. Yeah, I'm going to put that as a to be determined so we can get the proper um, resources to take a look at it. Why don't High school would just drop off lane. Current configuration is dangerous. Slight widening of road would allow for two lines. Um, the exterior lighting there that we have from Jones Onslow, that would have to be relocated for that to happen. Um, if it's a need, you know, there would be some expense in there for, for them to relocate the power. Okay. So I don't know about the safety as far as the safety. All right, so is it, I mean, the drop-off lane, is, is it dangerous? I mean, as far as the maintenance goes, it's fine. It's, it would just have to be a safety issue, I would okay. think. Probably a is this something that we need to uh, address this coming year? or? It's a bit long-term, because we had to reconfigure the parking lot, not just, I mean, for that front entrance, if I'm thinking of it. Right area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that little island right there too. Yes, so. sir. So it, it take a lot of work through there. Okay. So that's a C, whatever. C. You all in agreement? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sidewalk connection. Paved walkway needed for safe movement of walkers from Piney Green Crossing to the front of the school. Okay, I know we got sidewalk in front of the school, but is that sidewalk coming into the I think there's, he's talking about, you know, there's a, um, a crosswalk right there in front of the main entrance of the school. Possibly uh, they need a sidewalk running from that up. Yes, sir, right there to your left. Right, right here, there. Just this right up and in here. And they continue the sidewalk up through that process. I think we just have to take down those trees and, um, and just put a sidewalk in. students there in the afternoons when they're letting out and not go through there. Um, they use that constantly, so I would think that's probably an A. Okay. Security camera additions. Additional security cameras needed 32 to cover exterior doors and key blind areas. Let's see how many they have right now. 38. They have 38. And the systems 
systems can hold up to 64. Mm -hmm. So that actual 32 number probably need to be bumped up to about 40. I say a 2C. That's a long term to add that many. Okay. Because, so right now they got how many again? 38. 38. And if you had 32, that would be 70. Mm -hmm. So you're talking adding another system. That's yeah. why I said that 32 number would need to be bumped to 40. Yeah. But I or, said 2C. And right, right now the maximum number of cameras we have on any campus is 55. Am I right? Except for us and bus garage are sharing a system. Yeah. Okay. And later on, I mean, if we wanted to add a camera here or a camera there, that's right. different. And that, yeah, that's a lot easier than... So, okay. Radio additions. Additional two-way communications is needed. 20 new radios to cover admin, custodial, and office. Now, how many how many radios do they have right now? Um, I know we provided fifteen, and I think they've made their own purchases since then. So I'm not sure of a total number. Um, I think historically, did I mean we we supplied radios initially, and then they yes. provided radios as needed. Yeah, can we keep a convenience that? contract so that the schools can purchase? <clears throat> okay, so that'd probably be something to be more of an other funding then. Okay, you guys are agreeing with that. I mean, historically, we've been able to provide a few here and there that have been on a request, but not 20. <clears throat> okay. Concrete or cement bollards back at the campus outside the dining room to put some bollards out there. Yeah. Fencing between Jim and the weight room. And that's one of the things to do that. We'll have to check with the fire marshal if we can do that even. So to all that's to, those, those three are to be determined if we can okay. do that. So fencing between the gym and the weight room, fencing between the weight room and 300, and fencing between 100 and the cafeteria. We'll just have to take a look at it, see what can be done, what's even allowed. PV sense, PVC fence repair, nine Wolf small Wolf. sections, four quarter. Yes. Additional AI phone locking system, separate AI phone locking release mechanism. Not sure where that would be at. With it says the auditorium. I don't, that shouldn't be an issue with public going to the auditorium during the day. Right, because we go through. Right. Okay. But as far as locking, um, I think it's, he's got card access down here at the bottom, or a little farther down. Mm -hmm. That would, we would cover. Right. Everything that in would that cover it in. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put a five. Yeah. Put a five C on that one. Okay. It's not a additional master. Additional master station. Additional master station in secured inner portion of the building. I'm not sure what he's referring to there. That is to go with the A phone. I just list that as a five C as well. He's at, he's saying another person can have access to it. Oh, I got you. <clears throat> two, AI wall phone, two AI phone wall mounted emergency stations. Um, the next two, he's asking for, these are like emergency call boxes almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't done that on the campuses yet. That's something we need to take a look at that, just see, I mean, how that would work. You know how on some college campuses and stuff they have call boxes? Is that something that we need in certain areas? Uh, I could see, for example, at Jacksonville High School, 
maybe it would be a, a nice area because it's so spread out in different buildings. But we'll have to take a look at that one. And you got the card access system. Yeah. And too and you have lots of people coming and going right. in cars and hanging out yeah. in the parking lots and such not necessarily a lower grades issue that's right and then um okay so the card access system i just put all sites because i'll address that in mine okay six digital display systems integrated emergency digital displays lights for lockdown of for gym out of court I'm not sure what we're. Is that for um, the Silox system? I think he's just asking for digital displays that he can display anything. For digital signage. Yeah. Okay. So that's more of an instructional. Okay, is that something that's needed this year, coming year? I'm not sure what his request is. I think what he's trying to do is get some digital signage for all the all the the core areas where there's congregation and stuff like gyms and, that, and stuff like that. I mean, he does mention lockdown notification on there. It would. Of each of his hallways, he had a system at one time that had a little digital reading on uh, whatever the hallway that was like kind of the name of the hallway with some signage, but also can change mm -hmm. uh, with some announcements and everything along that. I don't think that's probably a 4B. 4B? Okay. Stadium press box enclosure. Okay, need to enclose existing press boxes to secure stadi stadium sound system. Vinyl has been damaged by the storm. Are we replacing the vinyl in this press box? Do we get any? We haven't, we haven't done anything press box wise, sorry. Okay, <laughs> nothing's been identified for the storm? No, sir. All All right. Right. Why so it's a three. Is there something that's needed? If it's tore up, I mean, yeah, tore up. I mean but okay, I would, three I would, they, they probably should have put that on there. Um, would MKA look at that? Do you know, Daniel? They, they, had, they did. Not the press box, did it? Is yeah. that something that we were going to be back for you The stadium sound system okay. replacement. Okay, last replacement was not sufficient for an outside facility. Partial school funding planned. Need additional help. Now, normally the sound systems, is that something that Century Clubs or Booster Clubs help out with? Or is that? Potentially, they yeah. could. <clears throat> um, or you can do a fundraising plan for I'm going to put other funding on that one for right now. If that's, I mean, if you guys are in agreement with that. Okay, stadium entrance repaving. Okay, my few ruts and holes in the stadium walkway and trip hazards. Is that a work order? Yes, sir. Stadium front bollard repair. Work order? Yes, sir. Stadium gate replacement. Or order. Stadium gate addition. Additional access gate at the back of the stadium to access practice soccer field. Or order as well. Okay. Stadium gooseneck goals. To ensure soccer goal compatibility and reduce need for students to move heavy soccer goals, install new gooseneck field football goals. It's an instructional. <coughs> I don't know what he's currently using. He's 
probably got the straight poles. But. So. Yeah, I think he talking about the like the move them, which I mean I think all of our schools are moving them on and off the field. That's not. B or C? Garage door replacement. Okay. That's the insurance check thing. Okay. Additional lighting in the back lot. That's a work order. Um, possibly. That's, and if we have to get um, more poles installed, that's a Jones Oslo thing. We have to pay them to do that work. All right. Um, we're also in the process of already doing that anyway. We, because of the animals they have on the back side, to the right, we've already added some lights and stuff back there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be adding lights to the barn area, so to light up the area back there. So it's okay. kind of a work in progress right now, sir. All right. Sorry. Additional lights set in back lot. Same. Dupe. Dupe. That's a dupe, yeah. All right. Rubberized track. Or something that's been discussed on and off for quite a while. One of the things that um, for for the tracks, I mean, and we've we've had these discussions before and stuff too. Uh, right now, the only rubberized track we have in the in the district is in Swansboro High School. The Century Club for Swansboro High School has been paying for and maintaining that rubberized track for the last dozen years, at least. Okay. And it cost them, I think initially it cost them $85,000 to put it in. And then they just redid it. I think it cost another 100000 give or take. I don't know the exact numbers. But it's the only, but it's the only one that has a rubberized track in the, in the district. We've been looking at, well, can we help um, pay for part of, part of a rubberized track for some of the other high schools to help share, share the load? That way they can have more... Uh, um, competitions and stuff at these fields as well and so historically we've had conversations well if we pay for half the school system pays for half with the century clubs or booster booster clubs be able to pay for the other half and stuff and we've never really came up with a, a, a good solid solution in that process so this this continually comes up uh, periodically am I saying that right Brad mm -hmm. yeah so one of the areas that we were looking at was Richlands High School was for a uh, rubberized track and also a White Oak High School for a rubberized track because they were more centrally located. That way it wasn't just putting everything over in Swansboro. And so that's one of the reasons why this, this uh, request has come up. Okay, previously approved but not funded to new circumstances need remains for a new track. So it's an instructional need. I think you had mentioned with yours you need an instructional need for a new track too. Now, in the past, what we've done is we've resurfaced tracks. I mean, using using asphalt. While it, it works, it's not it's not suitable for for competitions. So, so that's where we're at with that. So it's an instructional need, and I think for for your track, I'm trying to remember what we put put for your track too. 3A. Was it 3A? That's what we put. Mm -hmm. But yours has some structural damage too on it. Yeah, and in order to, if you were going to rubberize and do the things you needed to do, you'd have to look at runoffs and drainage and. Right. Uh, so there was a there's a lot yeah, to yeah. tires. Yeah. So in this one here, do you do this a 4A or 4B? I would almost say an A. We've talked about it long enough. I think mm -hmm. it's. I think we have to make a decision on it. So, sure. Tennis courts addition of eight tennis courts at a half million dollars. I'm going to put that in other funding sources. If that's okay with you guys. That's more of a capital improvement program construction item instead of a annual annual need. Small baseball press box. It's 
small enclosure is needed at the baseball field to house and score baseball sound system equipment. So that's four. And I mean, as far as the urgency of it, any any particular recommendations? The four B. I know Brad's looking at all these going, I'm taking notes next time. I'm at 4C. 4C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, all right, light pole replacement at the baseball field. Okay, replace hollow top field poles or remount lights lower and install metal caps. Is, is that a. Are we having a, a issue with them right now? Um, they're still working. Um, it's just something that that's more or less a PM type thing. There, we need to replace the poles because they've just been there for so long. Okay. Or, or, or rework them so that maybe we can continue to use the post. And so that's a three. Three A. Three A. Okay. Baseball batting cage. Additional batting cage. Okay, it's an instructional need. Pipes buried four feet, 55 feet long. Is that, um, is that not traditionally the Century Club over there? Other funding? Sucks. Okay. Next one is baseball patron area drainage issues. Runoff has created a dangerous drop-off area from sidewalk to grassy area. Is that a work order? Yes, sir. That next one's a work order as well. Okay, and the next one is baseball yes, fence need to be retied. Okay. <coughs> so softball ticket booth paved pad. Small paved pad and cover needed at end of softball road for admission collections. Okay, so that's a... Uh, is, is that preservation of property? So it's instructional? Well, I'll tell you, it's probably instructional because it'll allow them to take money to create school funding so mm -hmm. maybe 4B you guys okay with that softball sound system a modest sound system needed for softball facility is that a 6 other funding that was very modest <laughs> softball farm Road paving. Gravel road near softball field and farm needs to be paved. So if I'm looking at that. I don't think that's the other way. Other way. Other way. Other way. Yeah. Oops. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Does it go around the back? He wants to pave this right here. No, I think he wants to pave that, that road right, right there. there. Yeah, so I think the farm's over there, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Have we had a lot of issues with it? I feel like if you pave it, you're going to create a lot of issues. Yeah. That's what we've had. That's why we got extra light in there, because people like to go pave there and park. Okay. <laughs> so, that'd be a 3C. <clears throat> or would it be a... Uh, 3C. Okay. Softball bathroom upgrades. Two small bathrooms need light, painted, and partition upgrades. Safety and property protection issue. Okay. So. Is it 2A? Is it a safety issue? Do they have lights out there? 
I don't know what the bathrooms look like. How do you make it look? TB. TBD. Yeah, sir. Okay. Softball field clay. Eliminate sod with infield arc and replace with clay. It's a uh, six. Wrestling mats. Two very old wrestling mats are owned by the school for both foam thickness compression will soon place them outside of regs. Okay. Four A. Purchase. Other funding? Okay. Band field bleachers. Two sets of bleachers are needed at band field to add seating for band and new lacrosse team for practice purposes. All right, so that'd be instructional. Is that something that's needed this coming year? Remind me what they sit on now. Also, say where are the, where the, the field? field. Yeah. It's a practice field, though, right? Yeah. Uh, the, is that the area over by the softball? Well, it's like a practice field, field and for the band. Yeah. Just, just find the, the band. Oh, no, it's got to be just practice. Oh, the auditorium. Behind 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 Practice. Right, correct. Practice. Well, it says, yeah, it says lacrosse practice. for practice purposes. Okay. Apiary paving and enclosure. Current apiary needs a paved. Current apiary needs a paved area and shed to secure materials. Now I had to look this up. Do you guys know what an apiary is? I didn't know it. Right. No, apiary, not an apiary. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's probably apiary. a greenhouse, ain't it? It's for bees. Oh, it's a bee house. It's in his old storage construction area out there on that fence. Where are they? have a construction yeah, fence. Up in, uh, yeah, it's in there. He's got it right in this little storage area. Right in there. It used to be all there's some blocks out there and old concrete materials. It's got cleaned up there. Uh, yes, yeah. there three or four beehives out there now. Yeah, so. so, needs a paved area and shed to secure materials. So that's a, a that's a four. A B C. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? It's not preservation of <laughs> what we already have there. So this right. is not. Right. So this is going to be instructional. I would think. Yeah. So. <clears throat> 4B, 4C, 4B. Okay. 4C. Outdoor all weather surface. Addition of all weather surface with goals, painted lines, etc. for multi purpose use. I'm not sure what he's talking about here. It's one of the outdoor basketball areas. Multi purpose use. Yeah. All right, gym lobby. No gym lobby exists. Current use of main hall. Construct new lobby with appropriate common facilities. That's going to be a six. Other funding sources. That'll be the capital improvement program. Auxiliary gym. That would be a six. Construct new music band rooms near auditorium. That's major construction. These things are major construction, which are outside the capital outlay um, scope. So that'd be a six. Convert old band room to additional locker rooms. Well, that relies on the other mm -hmm. one. So that's a six. Area paving needed in bus lot area. Area between football stadium fence and bus lot needs to be paved. Many complaints. Mike, a little drainage issues, and we may. Where, where are we talking about? The only place that's not paved is where we park our activity buses and the sub buses. Oh, so there you look, back. 
Right to the, uh, what, yeah, right in there. Right in there? Mm-hmm. All the way to the back. I think he's talking about the. Oh, I got you right up in here. I think he's talking about the end of where the yeah. school bus is apart and between the actual, like, football field where the track is there. Is that one little one path little right, area there? right there? It's yeah, between right the fence and the buses, yeah. Well, the buses don't park right there because they we've got enough parking places for our buses there on the lot. Do what about the um, away the away teams? Are they, where are they parking at when they come in? Yeah, over here somewhere, and they walk to the yeah. Yeah. So that's a. Okay. <clears throat> Paving median soccer area practice area. In, in median soccer practice area. Need turnaround paved area beyond bus garage near the soccer practice field. That's where we were talking about previously back where the other buses are parked. Right in there. Have you had any problems with the parking back there? We haven't. I mean, because usually when they come out of her office, they're, they're right there for mm -hmm. the activity buses, and if they need to get a sub right. bus, they'll drive your vehicle by there. Okay. Have you had any safety issues, Dusty, that you're aware of? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say five. See for right now. Additional lights in courtyard. Additional benches in courtyard. Add permanent seating in main courtyard. Yeah. So, four B. What do you think it would cost, Dusty? How much does a bench cost? Probably a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go up. Let's say three thousand. Lighting needs outside art art rooms. This is a safety it's issue. Not, it's just a work order. Okay. Broken Bear Yellow Gate on Piney Great Piney Green. The back lot was hit and needs to be replaced. That's just a work order. Temporary building upgrades, continue to replace and repair ramps and skirting around temporary buildings. Some of that's already happening, but now the ramps are probably not being replaced. That would be a, I don't know if that would be a safety issue or. Do they need to be replaced? We repair them as needed. I <coughs> think the ones at the elementary schools are more important. Especially at the preschool areas and those, so that probably like a three C, three B. Okay. Seven of those, seven of those pins have been working on there. Yeah. Marquee addition. Put some signage out front. That'd be nice to have. It'd be. Uh, Or, I mean, signage right in that area would be good to have for yeah, just the location. It. You want to try to put it as an A and then see what happens? Yeah. Because that, that just benefits the whole school system right there because you can send messages out for every, everybody. Okay. CAC light replacement, small auditorium. Cultural Art Arts Center is well used, but lighting system is inadequate. 
and limits the use of the facility. It's currently working, so it's an improvement they want. I guess it's an instructional need. Okay. All right. Four B. Scrim replacement. Coltross stage needs new scrim and associated back curtains. Main curtain is fine. Okay. Drop screen addition for the CAC area. Middle as well, about a drop screen. Which? I'd say 15,000. 15, 15, by the time you do all the wiring and, and the screen itself, it's probably mm -hmm. about three or 4,000. Mm -hmm. You got to do the motor, motorization of it and projection. And so. If it's Swansburg Middles, is a 4B. 4B. <coughs> Because don't they use that area's classroom sometimes too? Yeah, mm -hmm. several classes. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Broken seating needs to be removed and replaced in the small auditorium. All right. The seats pretty bad shape over there in the small auditorium. My understanding, oh, Chris, sure. that their uh, parts aren't available to fix the existing seats. Yeah. Okay. Three A. Eight tall cafe-style cafe tables to near the CAC concessions. I think I had some donated tables for that one. Okay, so that will be six other phones. Carpet replacement in the course room. So, what's the carpet like, does I mean, Daniel? It's on our list, but is the maybe next year before we get to it. So. Okay, three B. Yes, sir. Fifty music posture chairs. Chair replacement in course room. Current seating is inadequate or broken. Okay, that's four. I'm not quite sure what I meant by the chairs. So well, the, the, um, the band chairs, they have a straighter back on them. So they're not like your regular I can see classroom Dixie. seats. I can see if Dixie has any of those under the court form. Okay. So that would be... 4B, you see. Okay. Rubber flooring replacement. Current flooring is temper... Is temp matting need rubber vinyl solution due to health and safety? This is for the band room. We're, we're working on that now, trying to find something because you know, it was tore up because of the hurricane. Okay. All the carpet was removed, so we're working on that right now. Okay. Evaluate acoustic treatments of band and course rooms. Four. Four B. Music room instrument storage. To protect expensive instruments, additional storage systems are needed for band and orchestra. Okay, that would be 4B. 4B. Window addition, main office, two or three small windows added to blind wall visual, so you can have visual parking. That's more of a other funding sources. Right. Um, we definitely have to have an architect involved in that. All right, guys. You guys want to take a five-minute break, and we'll try to get knock this out. Sorry to make it go that long, but. Now that we're all refreshed and ready to go.
we uh, we talked a little bit about this. We're going to do a little bit of a, uh, a change of plans. Okay, uh, we've got a little bit more on the White Oak High School to do, but uh, we know we are time constrained right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump down to the safety and security items coming up next, and then as we finish up the the last sections that we have to do, more of the all sites um, requests that we have. Then if we have time, we'll go back into the White Oak High School request again, all right? If we don't make that time, then what we'll do is I'll get a subset of people together and we'll go through, try to do some prioritization, send you guys a copy of it, and make sure that you guys are in agreement with it as well, okay? Because the next session we have, what we want to do is we just actually want to go in and see if we can whittle the mo monies down to what we need, either the 5.4 million or the 3.8 million, whatever it's going to be. You guys in agreement with that? That way, we get you guys out of here by 12 o'clock. It's been a long day already. So we first conversation is safety and security, and it's the NVR. Okay, it's the video systems. Okay, and um, put an NVR system for transportation in central office. All right, Dusty. Yep. Um, right now, transportation is <coughs> on the same um, NVR as central office, so we're splitting. And um, Mike needs some additional work done at his um, on his office, so um, we can add some cameras. And right now, we cannot do that because they're on our system. So how many cameras do we have right now? For, for Sixty-four reach? between the two cam campuses. Yeah, we're maxed out. All right. So in that process, it's a it's a safety and security issue. Um, yeah, I think so. Mike needs some additional coverage over there. All right. Is there something that's needed yes. this coming year? It would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to be nice. <laughs> 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 I'm just messing with Mike. Would that be 2A? Yeah, I'll put a 2A in there. Okay. Uh, card access. All sites. <clears throat> installation of card access system will, for 12 additional sites. Um, this is to continue with our um, adding the S2 door system. Um, Are you all familiar with the S2 door system? The card access, like when okay. you enter here. Um, our, our new facilities and stuff, um, your, your badges actually have a chip inside them that you can't see, you can't even feel. But um, it allows you, to, when you go to the new schools, if you scan, you can go into the school. But each, each person, each badge, okay, is is based on that individual person so they have authorization to certain certain schools certain locations certain time frames so if you have um, let's say you have a, a TA and they got a badge well and they can scan in during the day seven o'clock to seven o'clock at night but on Sunday nights at nine o'clock or ten o'clock at night do you want them in the on the campus well you may want them but that's that's and that could be programmed that way, but anybody that scans in, it's automatically logged and recorded as well. Everybody has a badge, so they don't need a key to get into the doors. Okay? So that's the other positive side of it. So right now we're putting the perimeter access, and we, we call that the perimeter access doors as well. And so we're putting that in together for a lot of the schools. Uh, we do a lot of elementary schools. Yeah, we've done 10 elementary schools, and we should have another eight done uh, this spring um, and then Jacksonville High School so we're in the process of doing that so that's yep. so moving forward into the middle schools next year so it's a it's a two and we'd like to and what they'd like to do is continue it would impact all, I mean the majority of the schools yep. in that process so 2 a playground uh, we're looking at replacing playgrounds for four schools. Adults. Change that to three. To three? Yep. Thompson's already getting work done through okay. a grant with preschool. All right. And that's just to continue moving forward. Um, playgrounds are supposed to last about 10 years. Our playgrounds are in years 18 to 20, most of, the, most of them. Um, so we've been trying to replace two to three every year as we can. So this is just to continue moving forward. <coughs> So, I've never been on a schedule before. 
So we're trying to create that. Is that something 3A? Are you guys comfortable with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Building labeling. Um, I think we moved that to 2019. Right. Okay. And then the next two, the chemicals, uh, removal and grab and go bags, we moved to local. Mm -hmm. So that's other funding sources. Yep. Okay. Transportation. Okay, replacing the maintenance service trucks. B2A, these vehicles are anywhere between 15 to 22 years old and anywhere between 170 some thousand miles to 200,000 miles on these vehicles. And we've had to put back on sub trucks to add on to the fleet. And some, we have one truck that uh, we can't even get a parts for it anymore. So it's been down. So I would suggest a 2A. Everybody in agreement? Mm -hmm. Replace the loaner van? I keep, I usually keep a van across the street to give out to the schools, board members to go around, um, um, send people to classes and stuff. That's about a 3A. How many miles of the loaner van that we have on it now? I, I don't even have a van anymore because I had to give them out for transport to students and okay. um, lunch wagons. Okay. Replacement of activity buses? I would say a 2A. They are, one of them's 20 years old, the other three are 21, and every one of those vehicles are over 200,000 miles. Y'all in agreement? Fuel master monitoring system? Um, I would say a 4A. How's that instructional? Well, I mean, excuse me, 6A. We go. Next try. I know. It's worth a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuel polisher. I would say, uh, uh, is everybody familiar what a fuel polisher is? No, I was about to say, what is that? <laughs> it's the one that I'm looking at. It's a mobile unit. If you get water or algae in your fuel tanks, we can take this and recycle the fuel and get all the water or algae out, and we can use it for the in-ground tanks and uh, above-ground tanks. So that's something that we could use also? Correct. Yeah. Right. So basically, it, it restores the fuel to uh, original, basically almost original condition so you can use it over and over again. One of the things that people don't realize is these underground tanks that we have, we do keep them, we try to keep them topped off because it, it's better for the tanks. I mean, it, it preserves the tanks and also we have that additional fuel. And that helps out during hurricanes, I mean hurricanes or emergency declarations because at times we are probably one of the, one of the entities that uh, provide fuel for a lot of different uh, services. Mm -hmm. I mean, emergency operations use, I mean, requested fuel from us last time. And so the, all that being said, while we have these, this fuel in, in the ground or fuel in these tanks, okay, you get condensation back and forth and you get water and sometimes you get a little biology growth in them. Well, what we can do is instead of draining out the tanks and getting rid of the fuel, and refilling them, cleaning and refilling, we can just recycle through this fuel polisher, okay? And it just restores the fuel back to its original condition and puts it right back in the tank. Also, the last time I had one of the tanks clean, it cost $10,000 just to come out and clean our tanks. Just how, one. How often do we have to do that? <sighs> we keep a check on it. On, it really all depends. Mm -hmm. and we've got you know, what kind of fuel we get. I think that's something that, that, that we, if we had access to, that that would pay for itself in the first uh, two years. Well, we have to pay to buy fuel. We have to, if the fuel is bad, we have to pay to get rid of it. Then we have to pay to buy fuel to put back. 
and we pay about half the price of fuel to get rid of it. So, you know, something like this could pay for itself very quickly. And, um, and then we could utilize some of that older fuel that we've been storing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but those, those uh, storage tanks that we talk about under, is for heating oil. But does everybody know that heating oil can be used as diesel? And diesel is heating oil? Learned that last year with Daniel. <laughs> so, so that's why it gives us a lot of flexibility by doing that. So if you're okay with that, I'd like to put a 3A on that one. Transportation facility generator. Uh, during the hurricane, we had a small generator to operate the fuel pumps. When I was fueling the trucks um, for Amwasa and whoever else needed to fuel during the hurricane, it took us hours because we were having to pump 1,800 gallons of diesel fuel with a nozzle into our trucks. This way I can use the overhead pumps to pump the fuel in case of, you know, power outage or whatever. Is that something we can look at uh, some other kind of grants or anything working with the county too? I can check on that. Because I know, I know we're trying to work with the county on different, well, well, capital outlet comes with the county too, so I shouldn't say that, but all right. So we say, um, well, the next two generators, I can, we can just look at that. I can go and see if I can get a grant. Six, okay. Um, the Wi-Fi, I've already purchased that. Okay. And the printer for Tim's, I would say, uh, 3B. Diesel laptops, diagnostic computers? That would be, I would like a 3A because we only have a handful now that I've been purchasing each year. This is for the mechanics to go out and work on the buses, so if it's just like a regular car. You have to plug into them to get them to find out what's wrong with them nowadays. So a 3A. All right, let's go on to all sites now. We got architect and engineering. A lot of these, a lot of these projects. I mean, Dusty. I mean, you could talk about it, but uh, a lot of these projects that uh, require us to do some work, required us doing that, we have to get an architectural architects to look at it and approve it, and or engineers to stamp it <coughs> to make sure that uh, we're not we're meeting all the civil work civil requirements or structural requirements or mechanical requirements in this process. So that's one of the things that we have out there is whenever we we use that uh, to hire engineers and contracts, even for like a press box uh, or something like that, well, we got to get somebody to stamp it saying that it's structurally sound before we can move forward on it. That's something that's used constantly. And, and as you've seen as we've gone through the different school requests, where we may need a civil engineer involved or a structural engineer involved or an architect involved. So uh, that's where we pull those funds out of um, to be able to do those projects. And sometimes we're asked by the different um, regulatory uh, agencies to go through and reevaluate things that we have to get these people and something. Somebody with a stamp to say something is either right or wrong. <coughs> Okay. So, so that's a definite need. 3A, you guys okay with that? Ceiling and lighting? Dusty um, Daniel? As we go through um, our repairs of the facilities, and um, you'll probably have seen where our electricians are replacing lights and fixtures, um, or have to have a lay in ceiling uh, installed, um, that's where that those funds come from. So those are basically uh, operating uh, expenses or, or, or materials that the maintenance department can use to do uh, repairs and renovations other than just a repair part because it's more in, more intensive than just replacing one light here or there out of repair maintenance funding. Uh, this is when we go in and 
place lights, maybe in a whole classroom wing. So it's or, it's a, a. This is something that we use every year. <clears throat> You okay with 3A? Yes. Painting? Yes. Daniel? Want to still go with our rotation where we started a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. picking schools out and put it on an eight year you rotation? Made, yeah, so the others know too and stuff. What we're, what we're doing is we're trying to put a, the schools on a, a 10 year rotation for painting, painting the schools. Okay, because one of the things, I mean, we know we have old schools, but one of the things we can do is make them, make them look nice. And that's what we're trying to do right there in that process. And after 10 years, there's a lot of wear and tear on a school. And so, it's, so we're trying to set up a program so we can paint four schools a year. Okay, and that's, that's kind of what we're doing there with the all sites there. So a lot of times when you saw that we had painting in some of these facilities, when we go back through again, we may say, okay, well, that's part of the all sites. Three A. Yes. So I think everybody agrees that they they like to see their their school painted and look yeah. n looking nice. I feel like a lot of these. I mean, I'm just skimming ahead, but it's all legitimate concerns that all schools need mm -hmm. yearly. Yeah, that's why that's why we call them all sites. Yeah, I mean, but I'm like, <laughs> they look very reasonable. I think for like yeah. all of them, I think are probably three A's. It, it 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 works out that way a lot of times. What what you'll see in this process, what we even though. Um, we well, see a, a lot of this process. We'll see a 3A right now, and you'll see the, the dollar amounts. Mm -hmm. Well, these dollar amounts changed as we whittled down the amounts to get down to the, the optimum number. So even though it may be a 3A, it may not be 100,000, it may be 75,000, or maybe this or that as we go through this process. We're, right now, what we're doing is we're identifying the need. have to work with the schools schools work with us as far as shutting down space or shutting down classrooms uh, when we're, we're either we're painting replacing windows replacing lights and y'all have been involved in all of that before so it's um, some of the requests that were, have already been laid out that where the schools have made requests we recognize those it's just ours are not necessarily assigned to a certain school certain building a lot of times we have to work with the school and we may have to, we may have intention of doing here, but we have to move to here for because of some other reason that just logistics. Here's a, the next one on the environmental testing performed by contracted services. This is a, one of those things that um, is kind of ad hoc. In other words, we may get a we may get a a, a concern or a request to look at uh, certain classrooms or certain spaces because. Somebody thinks that there may be some environmental issues in that classroom. Well, we actually go out and we test it, and we bring in contracted services to help us out in that process. Or if we got to look at um, any kind of a simple example right now is Southwest High School. You know the gym floor. I may not have seen it, but it is. It looks like um, I don't know. It looks like a glacier was in there just. Everything's popped up and torn up everywhere on the gym floor because of the moisture and everything. Well, we got to replace it. Well, in the process of getting ready to replace it, it got a little more complicated because then all of a sudden you had to do environmental testing because the underlayment had some mercury in it. So we had to do some environmental testing there. And then you got to say, well, what about some of the matting? Is there any kind of asbestos that was contained all these years that has to come out too? Well, that might be an issue. You see what I'm saying? So we do all these testing and stuff. These services that while we have skilled labor that can do a lot of it, it's better that we have contracted services that can sign off on these things, saying that they're, they're clean. Air quality. I mean, we've done a lot of air quality testing over the last year, especially with Hurricane Florence. I think everybody, everybody's had their classrooms tested over, the la over this last year, so. Is that, is, is there's a note there, it's gonna be moved to the local budget, is, so. When you say yeah. just use regular contracted services, yeah, we just um, yeah we we'll move that yeah we use regular contracted services. Now after all that long speech I gave you, <laughs> that was a good one. Though. 
Yeah, well, it's it's good for it's good for the public. Yeah. But um, but after that long speech and stuff, one of the things though too is remember our capital outlay is for capital issues that have to be addressed. Services are kind of um, aren't really associated with that. We're putting that into our operational expenses. The only exception to that would be the architect and engineering because those that line item is specifically for capital improvements. Energy control upgrade. <coughs> Those funds, um, as, as, as in most of our sites, we have some type of a energy control system that uh, monitors HVAC equipment, starts, stops it, uh, maintains temperatures, and helps us diagnose issues with it. Uh, a lot of our equipment was installed uh, in the, in the, from the late 80s up into the current day. Um, as it becomes uh, antiquated, they, they no longer manufacture a lot of the components that we still have out there working. And uh, as it fails or gets struck by lightning, where you, you can't buy parts, but we have to go in and look at it and decide are we going to try to move parts from one place to another or just change out the whole system. So that $75,000, it would be enough to possibly replace a small system at one of the schools. So. Um, we're trying to upgrade things as we can, and we're also looking at where we're going to have problems. And, and historically, we have one or two schools struck each year by lightning during the summer that causes some major problems. And so we have we use these funds to, to rebuild the systems. So that's what that's for. So three three A. Okay, fencing. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory right there. Every every school requires fencing, and we do a lot of ad hoc fencing as needed. So a lot of the, the requests that were individual, when we go through and if those get taken out, then it falls back to this budget to, to do those work orders and to add that new fencing or to make repairs. All right, well, the next one is furniture. And I pulled that out of operational funds, okay, and put it into the capital outlay because that is actual, I mean, this is capital equipment here or furnishings right there um, mm -hmm. for classrooms you figure that um, we're trying to look at a 25 year replacement cycle for classrooms and and in that process if we've got 26,000 students then you're talking about a one a thousand fifty thousand sixty desks desks and chairs alone and, and the combination desk and a chair is about a hundred dollars okay so on an annual basis you're talking over a hundred thousand dollars just for desks and chairs not including the other stuff so that's kind of what we're looking at there and 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 25 year replacement cycle is probably a pretty good I mean that's a good you get you get a lot of use out of those desks and chairs after 25 years and so you guys okay with that? Yeah, I'd say four A. Yeah, mulch for the play areas. I think for elementary it's a big concern. I think two A. Two A? Okay. Okay, XRF tester and training. That's for lead paint? 3B. What's that? 3B. 3B. Paving. This is the all sites paving. Uh, a lot of times we got the potholes and everything and we just got to go in and fix or striping or... It's got to be a 3A. Right. Modular classrooms and ramps. Um, almost a 2A. Yeah, one. 1A. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's... Uh, as our inspector goes through, he, he uh, usually writes us up on a lot of that each uh, year. And um, and they've changed codes on certain things, and so we're, as we can, we're mm -hmm. trying to comply with all his requests. Right. So that's... One. <coughs> okay. We're building modular classrooms. Two A. So is it two A or three A? Three. And in that process, what we, what we do is our modular classrooms, we have some that are 
that were purchased in the 80s. And so a, a modular, that's a long time for a modular. Yeah, I well, had one of the ugly ducklings that had to be fixed. Uh -huh. And, oh, and once they go in and start working on them, they, they try to repair them correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a lot of times it's easier about doing that because if we take one out, then we got to go and get special permitting to put a new one in. So we'd rather repair and fix mm -hmm. the ones we have and put them in a, in a state of condition that is equal to or, or equal to or better than the new ones that we're actually receiving. And so that's why they go in and do a lot of gutting out and rebuilding them and get them back up to speed. Okay. Gym floor recorded, recoding? We moved that local. Okay. Remodeling of mobile classrooms? Okay, drainage repairs required by Diener, by the Department of Water Quality. That, in some ways, is duplicated by a lot of the requests that's yeah, already been made. That's what I was um, going to think. I'm going to. So, if we're going to be site specific or if we're going to be in all sites, that's ever how you want to handle that. Sort of. I think I'm going to make that a duplicate. Okay. Replace whole window replacement. Again, that we either go site specific for a lot of the window requests or we, you know, we try to do projects. So that's it's basically the same thing. If you, if you want to call that a duplicate, we could. Okay. Replace rusting dumpsters. Every year we replace a lot of our dumpsters, and the health department you know, has us to do that. And uh, while they're not super expensive, uh, it's cheaper to buy them than it is to try to re-weld them or replace them, to buy the steel. And um, so that's something that we have to have. In fact, we're waiting on dumpsters now. We've been waiting for a long time because we can't hardly get them. Okay. Money. And that's, you know, that's a health. Okay, awnings replacement at cafeteria loading docks. We have several, and it's not, it's not specific, but we have several schools that still have wooden structures uh, over their, um, at their cafeterias, back of the cafeterias for the trucks to unload, and they also cover some of the freezers and stuff, and so that's what was in there, and um, it's probably going to be cut out later, but it's a request, probably say a 3B. Okay. Placement window air conditioners. Those are for if we just try to buy a few That's window for air conditioners to, to, when they go, out. to mm -hmm. go out. And it's uh, we don't necessarily know which ones are going out, so that's why it's kind of like a catch-all. So because we don't, we're not allowed to have just so many in the warehouse because of the space. Uh, but at the same time, we're trying to use a lot of the older ones, like from Dixon Middle School and from the Richland, the old Richlands Elementary School, those two old schools. So we're blessed that we have some that we can pull out of stock, but they're not always the correct size. So that's just to be able to buy uh, maybe 10 to 15 units. That's the 3A. Okay. Service and condition of electrical main switch gear. On. Okay. That's one of those things that is that an operational expense or? Well, it's more or less a contracted service. We would have to hire someone to come in and go yeah. through uh, an engineering service. So and that's something that we've we've never we've only done partially. We did it at Hunters Creek right. Middle School one year, and uh, because we never turn the mains off, if they do fail, sometimes you cannot reset them. Right. If you cannot reset them. Um, then the school will be about without power for a while. So should that, should, it, should that be here in capital or should it be operational then? Either one. We, that's just one of the things we recognize that we need to do. We just never have the funding okay. to do it. 
All right, let's put it in that's operation. That's a PM right type now. thing that we're not. Right. And that's why I was thinking a PM thing is more of a operation. It's an operation. Okay, then you got site improvements. This is a catch all for things that, that we need. You need, you need a, yeah, you need a new trash can. There it is. So. We historically do things in site improvement, like if we have for some a major issue happen, uh, whether it's a, a, a lot of flooring that may have to be done, um, something that we just was not counted upon. A lot of times it will come out of that. Okay, and the next ones are um, just stock that we used to uh, <coughs> fix the carpets when you need uh, you need carpet replaced and. Uh, that's Tile. basically supplies mm -hmm. that we have to have each year. So I'll put 3A on all those if that's okay with you. Yes. The county office HVAC equipment. Nah. Nah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. I don't need it. That's something where our equipment here has never been replaced. Uh, their handlers uh, has okay. probably been there since the 60s. Some of the stuff, some of the stuff on the roof has been replaced, but we can't get R22 refrigerant anymore. So when you replace stuff now, you have to replace the air handlers and the condensing units. And so, uh, okay, it's one of those things that's working right at the moment. That's, that's what we're asking for. Mm -hmm. All right, maintenance, 20 inch UHA floor burnisher. Replace outdated equipment. Okay, the old equipment still working. Do what, sir? Old equipment still working, or no, we're surveying out. Okay. The all the ones that are identified in the are ones that are no longer in service. Okay. And it, they so they went to the study. They failed. They surveyed them out, so we haven't bought new ones yet to fill replacements, sir. Okay. So all this is basically custodial equipment that well, uh, the, the air scrubbers is. What we use with indoor air quality as far as when we have issues, we have to go out to address either painting or we have a odor. Those are almost a two way. Uh, those air scrubbers. Yes, sir. Those and they're and they're in constant use throughout the schools. I've worked I've worked with painting or something going on, uh, and we've recognized because of uh, of a lot of our roofing problems and stuff this year that we we utilize these. All right. And one for the vacuum cleaners, the current vacuum cleaners that we have, the Royals, um, we're no longer able to get parts for, so we're going to have to start purchasing another brand completely. And what we're talking about too, just just for the community. I mean, I know you guys are aware of this, but these this is equipment that's actually used in the schools. Mm -hmm. This is the custodians using the equipment and stuff, so it's not something that's is kept in stock or storage or, or anything like that. It, this is something that actually goes out to the schools and helps the custodians keep the schools in, in optimum condition. Yes, and those fans and things, those are, are when, whenever we clean carpet, uh, those are moved throughout the schools to help dry the carpet so that they won't be able to try to get them dried as quick as possible. The same way with the dehumidifiers. So, so yeah, I felt like the fans and the air quality equipment, do humidifiers would definitely be two A's for the safety of students. And then some of the other ones that are just the equipment for cleaning would probably be three A's. You all in agreement with that? I agree. Okay, next next question. If it's okay with you guys, um, we'll, you want to hold off on the White Oak High School or you want to go through the rest of them? Okay, good. One more please, please. Yeah, Do we? Still one more. If you guys want, we we can I'll finish up. up. You want to knock it out? Okay, White Oak High School. And and Brad, you are you are officially the, the high school representative now. Yes, sir. How bad? <laughs> <laughs> How well do you like one? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so the next one that we had uh, for White Oak High School was close in the breezeway and add an, ex extra, add an exit door. The outside transition from 200 to 300 is open to be closed for safety and energy efficiency. That's okay with you guys. I think that's other funding sources. That's something that comes out of uh, construction. You you agree with that, Dusty? This one, yes. <laughs> it's not part of the capital outlay scope. Continue repainting the project. Rooms not repainted for years. I think that's, I mean, as, we, as you're seeing the, the all sites, that's basically where that comes from. So, so I can say other funding sources or Look at all sites. Okay, continue T12 light replacement. And that's, that's part of that all sites that, that we just. And, and that ceiling and lighting budget out of the all sites, yes, sir. Remove and replace mastic tile in 100 hall classrooms. That's an asbestos removal project. I mean, because of the, the mastic underneath the floor right. tile. So at the moment, it's. 3B. 3B. Yeah. 3B. Okay. Addition of refilling stations with water fountains. That's a. The current water a, coolers are working. I think that would be something that would be a change. Yeah, I think it's a 5, 5B. What, and are you, are you guys familiar with what we're talking about there? Yeah. You got your water fountains out here, right? Well, now they make them. A good example of that would be Richmond. The new Richlands Elementary School. Now they make the water fountains where you can take your own bottle mm -hmm. or container and it'll fill it up for you, which is nice. I mean, I think all new schools will have that. I think everybody's going to be. We'll be seeing a lot more of these requests going forward. But uh, we had looked into a you know for as a school to just mm -hmm. or maybe have one near the cafeteria or something, you know. But right now that's kind of outside the scope of the capital yeah. outlay. Okay, gym wall padding additions. Extend wall padding to entry doors on both sides of the gym. What's that? Safety concern. The High School Athletic Association just requires a certain width, don't they, for competition? Mm -hmm. So right. this would be an extended yeah. width beyond that. Right. I would assume. So. Did you have trouble? What'd you say? That or other. Structural other or B, B, maybe. C. Okay. B. <laughs> I typed in B by accident. Okay. Locker room refurbishment. Okay. They're dark and unattractive. The locker rooms require lighting upgrades, painting, floor and seating replacements, and fixtures and partitions. Major renovation, so yeah, that being again would that be other other funding resources? resources. I think some of the things can happen with like lighting or something like that, yeah. but in the all sites, but we can do certain things, yes, sir. Okay, replace industrial washer and dryer. I think historically, the schools have purchased those on their own, on their own. is that right? Just stay on, never gone through it, so I don't know. Seems like I recall that when we had to replace ours at Honest Creek, that we had to replace we had our refrigerator. Yeah. I know that. That's a, to me okay. similar. Yeah. So other sources. Mm -hmm. Inner door locking mechanisms. Convert all classroom door locks to interlocking without a key. Okay, that one. That one right there. We we the way the doors and all the locks. Remember, we did this about six years ago, and one of the things that. They had a conversation about instead of using the key to lock it because if you had the inner door, if you had a button or some other way of locking it inside, then teachers can get locked out. In other words, is it possible that the kids just joke, joking around? Not that I wouldn't do it, but I mean, when I was a kid, but I could see with the teachers sneaking, I mean, walking out just for a second, I'd be running up there hitting that push button, locking them out. And so, in the, in the process of designing the, the security, secure, security program, one of the things that was done was that all doors had to be locked by a key on the inside. And that way, teacher would be the one locking it. 
So in that situation right there, I'd probably say N.A. Mm -hmm. Just in. Does that make sense, though? No, but is he asking, I mean, are there doors that are not interlocking, regardless of the key piece? No, all doors are interlocking. Okay. Now. Yeah, back about six, seven years ago, we went through and okay. we, we spent, uh, what, six, seven hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. to go ahead and get all the doors in the same key system, too, so. Localized PA volume control. For safety, he wants to volume up and limit PA sound when needed. Okay, that's that's going to be a TBD. I need we need to go back and see what we can do, what we can't do on that one. One of the things we want to be careful about is if we give them access to shut things down and turn things up, then all of a sudden we're not sure. meeting safety requirements. Right. Permanently installation of assistive, assistive technology in one room per department to allow for instruction of HI students. Heavily, I mean, was it? Hearing impaired. Hearing impaired, hearing impaired students. <clears throat> My only concern about permanent, I mean, is depending on the kids and their needs and the courses from year to year, mm -hmm. right? What do you? One room for department. So I wonder if there's a mobile solution that could be utilized instead of a permanent install. Right. I, I don't that know that what it is. EC department with the, right? Yeah. I think that'd be more of a other funding then? Yeah. Yeah, EC fund. So I know we have the mobile ones we utilize mm -hmm. for students. Um, I've just never, I'm not yeah, sure I mean, about the permanent C. Series of years where you would have a student that would need it versus right. Right. a few years. Right. Yeah. Or unless and, you were a hub of some sort. And not only that, what, what happens too, unfortunately, is because right, student populations kids. change. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and principals change, and or staff changes, and so all of a sudden the needs are going to be, well, I need it in this classroom now mm -hmm. instead of this classroom, or we don't need them at all, or we need more. So we need to have a little bit more flexibility in that process. We can make it mobile. CO2, CO2 monitor in the shop. Install CO2 monitor in large garage shop areas. CO2, we, we bring in outside air for fresh air, unless he's talking about carbon monoxide or something, if they have a, like, a, like a shop class that worked on vehicles or something. Yeah. Um, I'm not real. They're supposed to have exhausts going out. I mean, but we can, we'll look at that. I mean, just the TBD. Gym back rooms refurbished. Okay, disrepair in back offices and rooms, particularly the trainer's room. It needs a sink, requires new floors, new casework, update lighting. Okay. It's pretty um, bad shape back there. I think a lot of that was, I thought, was taken care of when they built the field house, that they had those facilities out yeah, there. It may yeah. be that they want to do something in those areas or they reutilize them, but I'm not real sure. That may be, again, other funds or, or, or capital, like construction budget. Okay. CT shop air quality needs to evaluate dust collectors and ductwork for cleaning and replacement if needed. Sounds like a work order. Um, that's a, well, it's, um, or is it? be an instructional need. Yeah. Uh, if it, we need to install it, we have to get someone to look into it and see how it needs to be designed. And, Contracted out. I'm going to put TBD on that. We need to take a look at that one. And so this can be safety issues too with the inspector. Sure. No, sir. Do we already have dust collectors in some of the rooms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the carpent carpentry shops. Yeah. So we just need to take a look at it. Culinary arts upgrades. Transform what was a residential kitchen model to a culinary arts model for food nutrition classrooms. When the architect be looking at it, 
yeah. for, because of the hurricane damage through that process, because that's where those areas are. Yeah, that's what we're looking at right there. So that would probably be from other sources. In process? Yeah, in process. Front brick masonry needs, replace all cracked. It, the reason why it's in process is because that's in that uh, science wing where there was EC classrooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, home ec class, not home ec anymore, but where those culinary, culinary classrooms are and they were completely destroyed. I know I'm showing my age. So that's that's good. But um, anyway, so we're in the process of looking at getting them rebuilt anyway. Front brick, ma front brick masonry needs. Replace mm -hmm. all cracked, broken, or missing, air, missing bricks around front planters. If it's just a matter of replacing a few bricks, that's a maintenance thing. Yeah. Work order. Okay. Media center carpet replacement. So I can't remember what that carpet looks like right now. I think you check our list. I was going to say, last time I looked at it, it wasn't as bad a condition as it was at Northridge Park Metal. I'm going to put a 3B there. I think if I remember correctly what it looked like. Office furniture request. Both AP offices are in need of furniture updates and upgrades. Okay. And I, I don't know what the furniture looks like in the AP offices right now. I'm going to do a TBD. I'll get with, we'll get with Will on that to let him take a look at it too. <coughs> Cafeteria acoustic panels. Add appropriate acoustic panels for use in the cafeteria, noise, re noise reduction, vent facilitation, more likely to hear PA. Is that something we can add in, in the, that, um, the update we did with the hurricane, from the hurricane money? Include that? It's just a matter of buying panels and installing them, it can be. Yeah. Okay. So that's other other sources then. Replace kiln and art room. Okay. So that's something they need. And what's that say for notes? Yeah, four. Yeah, four. Okay. Window blinds replacement. It's a work order. Construct new classrooms, that's a work order. I mean, that's other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Did I ever tell you how good maintenance is? <laughs> All right. And then uh, let's see computer equipment, replace AP and counselor's computer equipment. That's. Um, yeah, it's other, other funding sources. Classroom door, sanding, and sealing. That's just work order. Okay. Tractor cage conversion. Convert fenced and sheltered tractor yard to a secured double garage. Okay. All right, so. So he wants a he wants a storage building back there, instead of a cage. That'd be three. The urgency on that would be three B or C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Waterproof masonry of building. Water infiltrating exterior masonry in certain locations. Dusty, Daniel. We got some sections we need to go ahead and address now, um, particularly the um, back right corner of the science hallway, mm -hmm. where you know we're getting the calcium coming out of those blocks. We need to go ahead and get those walls cleaned and sealed. So we need to get them addressed this year. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. So that's in process. 
Lobby furniture, new lobby. Not in the process, we need to do it, sir. Okay, all right. Going to be in process. <laughs> <laughs> All right. New lobby furniture needed to replace outdated and broken furniture. We put TBD on the AP furniture. Is that something yeah. else? That yeah. We'll look at the same time. That's a good point. <clears throat> Add Cisco phones. That'd be. Another for IT. That'd be other sources. Add two flagpoles to the front. How many, they got one flagpole right now? Probably. Is there one? Is there? Okay, so that's a, that's a five, five B. Student desk replacements, Ed. Okay, that's in the all sites that we just talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. LCD projector additions. That's uh, other sources. Locational building. 3C. 3C. For roof, to replace the roof. Three gas trains and supply piping. Preparation for natural gas. Um, Duke Piedmont is running, supposed to be running natural gas down Piney Green mm -hmm. all the way to, to Hunters Creek. Do you know when that's happening? Oh, uh, they say really soon. Um, so okay. I, that's just something that we need to do if we're going to be able to convert. Oh gosh. So if there are capital funds available, if there are not capital funds available, it'll get done anyway. So. <laughs> okay. Let's say the three A's, but. All right, guys, that's it right there. Thanks. All right, so let's do this right now, just just for just to give you an idea of what's going to happen going forward. If I just look at the A's that we've talked about right now, different priorities. Remember, we had 17 million that we started with, give or take. Okay. The six A's different source. Okay. I'll even include to be determined because we haven't looked at that yet. But so when I do that, then I'm going to go back up and look at all the requests that we that we've identified that we need to work on coming year. Hang on, we'll get there. That number is, we're at $10,282,980. Our first goal is going to be right around $5.5 million. Okay, so we have to cut it in half. Our second goal will be right around between $3 million and $3.8 million. All right, so our next, our next meeting, phase two, we're going into phase two now. Okay, we'll, we'll go through this. This will probably take about two hours. It goes a little bit quicker now. We don't have to go through all the detail now. We can just go in and start slicing and dicing and, and watch Dusty cry. <laughs> but uh, but in, in this process, but uh, this is what we need to do. So uh, I think the next thing we need to do is uh, schedule another meeting. I'd like to do it this week if we can. I know it's, I know it's awkward for you guys to take all this time, and I appreciate you guys doing it. Is there any particular data that would be better for you guys? I'll tell you what I've got. So 